Hi, welcome. Hey. Mm. Hello, what, what? Mysterium at Bainbridge <laughs> Estate. This is our very last episode. This is the finale episode. So um, it's going to be real slow. And uh, I think we're just going to chat the whole time. I mean, I feel like oh, that's, that's really good okay. for a, yeah. Right. Maybe just like not even as our characters. We'll just oh. hang oh, out. Oh, thank yeah. God. Right, right, right. No. I'm tired of this pipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not what we're doing. I feel like um, Jordan made that same joke on the wild cards. Uh, finale after I just did that. Uh, so, you know, I guess I stole a joke. Anyway. So go uh, back to your VODs <laughs> and check it yeah, out. Check it out. Uh, yeah, so welcome, welcome. If this is your for first time joining us for the Mysterium at Bainbridge Estate Mini Campaign, uh, then let me tell you a little bit about what this is about. So um, <laughs> this mini campaign is based on the board game Mysterium. So if you don't know that board game, you should go play it because it's a lot of fun. But also, um, you basically there are psychics that are going to a house to try and solve the mystery of this ghost's murder. And uh, the game itself is that seance. Uh, and so that's sort of what inspired this game. Uh, and we are using the Rises system, which I will get into a little bit here in just a moment. But first, let's meet our lovely cast. And uh, let's start over here with no you way. today. So no. tell them who you are, who you're playing, uh, talk a little bit about your cliches, and then I also want to know what you think is going on so far. <laughs> oh boy. OK. Hi, I'm Philip Rossi, and I am playing the Great Vano who is a, um, excuse me while I age slightly, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is a, uh, he's a, basically a fortune teller from somewhere on the continent with a uh, ambiguous accent and ambiguous facial hair. <laughs> um, so here we are, uh, he has a few cliches. He's kind of a, that turn of the century sort of pseudo magician, but maybe into real stuff. So uh, got four cliches. Uh, one is crystal ball gazer. He uses crystal ball to see images. Um, uh, that's a four. Uh, so I can roll four die for that. Dice. 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 I think when they're plural or dice. Yes. dice. Four dice. dice for that. One die. Four dice. Um, it's part of aging. I slowly gain, <laughs> gain knowledge <laughs> as my voice deepens. Um, I'm also a magician, so I have three dice for that. Um, a thief and uh, a Casanova is a one, which... Uh, has gotten me out of some tricky situations, but barely. <laughs> uh, and then he has a hook, so to his detriment, he is terrified of death and dying. Um, there's another question. What do you think is happening? What do I think is oh, happening? Yes. What do you think okay. is happening? So we've got we've got this uh, family. We've got uh, Lady Lorraine and Lord Edwin. Uh, there's some mysterious past from uh, Lord Edwin's aunt and uncle. They were there. They apparently killed themselves after their daughter died. Thank you. But uh, we found out there is another person who was, uh, I guess that would be Lord Edwin's illegitimate cousin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what, I think that's what's going on. That yeah. sounds. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. Aunt's, the lady, his aunt, his aunt? His, uh -huh. Yeah, his aunt uh -huh. had an illegitimate child. Yeah. Yes. So it was illegitimate cousin uh, <laughs> was born and apparently has died at some point. We never got any bastard articles about cousin. that. Uh, but this bastard, um, <laughs> this bastard's going around talking in people's ears, uh, convincing them to kill, and we're kind of repeating what has happened in the past. So bad news, I don't know how we're going to fix this. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. That's, yeah. that's what Very I got. Very nice. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who are you? Um, my name is Heather Wood, and I play Elliot Ellie Baker. Um, she's a flapper. She has a good time. Uh, she's a potty girl socialite. Um, uh, cliches. Uh, automa automatic writing, which is a three, um, uh, which I don't know if that's the, where she consults the spirit world or spirit guide and you get one word answers, and it's pretty cool. Um, Flapper it, which is the next cliche, which is out of four, which involves beads, boa, martini glasses, or chatting people up or dancing. It's actually coming really useful. It has. <laughs> um, a lot. Knife wielding, which is out of three. There's a nice little concealed stiletto knife, and stabbiness is fun. Uh, Does that mean it's a knife in her shoe? It's in the like a little like a little thigh knife, not, not inner in, thigh, not in a stiletto, but like a little stiletto style knife, like the, yeah, oh. She's not which is where the knife. name of the shoe came from. Because I think okay. the knife oh. came first. Oh wow! I, wow. I, I, yeah, I, I was like, I guess it's know. in your heel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> fun fact. It's true, <laughs> yeah, right? These fun um, facts are pretty fun. <laughs> um, uh, uh, oh, and the hook is that she will overdo it. She goes too far, which I still think need to play <laughs> go that far, better. Haven't gone far enough. Yeah, I haven't really gone far, far enough. But, uh, go too too far. further. Um, in terms of what's happening, uh, the Great Vano uh, explained pretty well. Um, oh, except we also, ra late, I think the last bit we did is we ran into a really super hyper loyal groundskeeper who was yeah. really hard to get him talking. <laughs> yeah. And we like used up all of our dice and all of our skills to get him to talk to us. And, I, and then we were attacked by the room. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's pretty much, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, let's jump over to you. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm playing Madam Iris Moody. Uh, she is an empath, so she feels energies. Right now she's pretty worn down from being in this house for a few days and uh, with these bad spirits and all the craziness that's happening and uh, I think gets drained quite a bit by Horace over here who's um, <laughs> he's a little. He's just the rational one. <laughs> Always challenging the group and doesn't think anything is uh, actually haunted or uh, bad. Well, I won't say bad, haunted. We'll go with that. Um, I have my hook is overtells information, which I also need to, to maybe work on. Work on our faults. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my main cliche is, is empathy, so I can do energy reads of objects, uh, rooms, and uh, people. And then I have a cliche that, oh, and that's a four dice. My other cliche is herbalism, it's two dice. It's helpful to figure out if things are poisonous. Uh, I don't know what else it's useful for, and making tea, maybe. I have a Snoop, which is three dice. And then I have World Traveler, which is two dice. Nice. Um, as my character, I think, we're all in a lot of trouble and maybe in over our heads and we're somehow trapped. Uh, as me, I think we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> well. Right to the point. How are you, Jordan? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan Pridgen and I am playing Horace Duncombe the Third, who is a proper English gentleman of sorts. And he has a he has a dog, whose name is Saint George. Uh, because he actually has three dogs. Uh, one is named Harry, one is named England, and one is named St. George. This is a Shakespeare reference. Um, uh, but he likes St. George the best, so he brings it with him. And he, uh, so my cliches are Pendulum Diviner, because he uses this pendulum to figure out mostly yes or no questions or like, figure out where things are, like, when a com if a comparison of things, like, lying around. Like, used it on a, a map to try and figure out where, like, things were focused. Uh, he also very much believes that his pendulum divining is not uh, a supernatural thing, but is, in fact, reading of uh, necroplasm, which is what is left behind when people uh, leave strong emotional impressions and then die and leave, and their, their thoughts and their emotions are gone, so they had to leave some sort of trace of where they were. <clears throat> Um, my second cliche is Hunter at two, uh, which has proved totally useless. <laughs> I tried to stick a dog on somebody and I tried to shoot some books <laughs> and I couldn't. <laughs> uh, historian, which has been decently useful. Historian at two, and then High Society at three, which uh, turned out to be pretty useful. Um, I shamed a ghost into a sense of decorum <laughs> for a moment last time. I was proud of that. And my hook uh, is supernatural scoffer, so he does not believe that what is going on is actually supernatural, like not actually malevolent forces. He thinks that there is a scientific explanation, even if we ha don't completely understand the science yet. And I, I don't think I've really brought that up in the character. Oh, so. not at really. all, not once. No. Yes. No, you're Why I have darkness under my that? eyes. It's, it's gone under the radar, understand. but that is a thing. I'll try and <laughs> remember to bring up. Yeah, you should do better. I know. Do better. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, so now that we've gone through and talked a little bit about characters, let's talk about oh. what the cliches are. Oh. Wait, I did forget to say what my character. Oh, you did. Yes. Right what, what did we think? Which, uh, so what Horace thinks is that a big, important, like, event happened here, and because the people who live here now are too close to like the same like roles and size and type of people, he thinks that 
they are naturally falling back into like the emotional slots that were left by the other people in the same way that if you like put a a like ball on a <laughs> bed you it would roll into a slot if like something had been sitting there that's what he thinks that makes sense i yeah. like that <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so uh, now that we've actually talked about cliches, let's talk about what those are in this system. So the uh, Rises system is what we're using. Oh, thank you, Nightsteed. And also, okay. Mamace, thank you, since you donated earlier. And thank you for Lara Lanya for the host. Just get those through there. Thank you all. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Um, yes, Very so good. Rises is a is a rule site system you can actually find online. It's by John or S. John Ross. Uh, and apparently it's a really old system. It's been around for like 20 years or something like that. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's ba the, the basis of it is you only use D6 in this. You only use just your normal D6 die. And as they said, they have their cliches. Sorry, this is a mosquito. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Move that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your cliches for your character. You have basically a description, cliches. You can have a hook, which is is a essentially negative to your character, as they said. It's a it's a flaw of some sort, which allows you to take one extra die at character creation. That's how that works. Um, but you choose your cliche, and it can be anything. It depends upon the kind of game you want to tell. You can do whatever you want. And you do put a number of die next to that cliche. You start with 10 or 11 if you have a hook. And uh, your highest one as a starting character can be 4, and you can have 2, 3, 1, whatever, um, until you run out of die. And then uh, there are different ways to utilize the system. You can roll against target numbers. You can do opposed rolls. You can, there's, there's a whole website. There's actually, so this, this uh, RPG is four pages. Pages long. That's the basic RPG. There's a 64-page companion to it. Uh, <laughs> so, so there are lots of things you can do here. So for our purposes, um, we have added the acing mechanic, uh, which means that whenever one of these D6s lands on a 6, you get to re-roll it. If it lands on another 6, you get to re-roll it again, and you're, you continue to add that number to whatever your total roll is. Um, and uh, I've been using opposed rolls uh, instead of doing target number for the most part here, so giving everything essentially a uh, cliche die amount. Um, and I, I think I like that, and I think that's been working pretty well. That is one way that you can utilize the system. So that's basically how it works. Um, combat is also an opposed role system. It's uh, same thing. You're rolling against somebody else's cliche, etc. And uh, when someone loses, they take one die negative to that cliche. If they get to zero, then they are out, whatever that may mean for your purposes. So that's the, basis, the basics of the Rises system. Um, let's see. Uh, next, I have just a fun little thing that I wanted to do because I like doing fun things like this. And I'll actually need uh, that Jordan's help with this. But I got you guys these little uh, glasses <gasps> that so are, cute. they're actually cordial glasses, but they look like they're little so martini perfect. glasses to me. So I got everybody Thank one you. of those. You're the coolest. <laughs> You've got, now we can have a proper seance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> proper seance. These are the cutest things ever. I love it so much. Yep, let me Ooh. throw this one on the floor oh, and then put my chair on it. Yay. 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 Oh, is that one for <laughs> Excuse mm -hmm. me? Does it matter? Oh. And <laughs> Here, take that floor one, Jordan. <laughs> take that uh, floor so one. Yes, and then uh, I know we have Maker's Mark, but I also brought really expensive um, Moscato and Whoa. champagne. Whoa. Oh, so really expensive. Yay. Super expensive. So Let's take do your it. pick. But Jordan's going to open it for us, so I don't know. What do you guys I can savor it. One. The pink one? It. I'll savor it. I brought a sword. A yeah, you'll, you'll, <laughs> I'll the savor sword it. is perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I just like muscled in with the pink one. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna, <laughs> it's just, it's just. Oh, you're just gonna take them all like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh oh, oh God. Nope. What? <laughs> There's a sword over there. Where that, what is that? Where'd that come from? It's a lion's. Oh. Wow. Oh. It's what? Lions. It's. It's Lion's uh, sword. Who's oh Lion? man, are you upping he's, uh, your prop game? For, he's, for he's, a, he's a rogue. <laughs> You've got to tell he's us. He's a ridiculous he German rogue. I finally brought. Okay. Um, anyway. Last Thank time so I just so took cool. a You're welcome. Yay. <laughs> You're welcome. I thought they, I found them and I was like, oh, well, I have to do that. <laughs> so we can have a proper seance with our tiny little martini glasses, <laughs> uh, which will be, you know, fun to try and drink like that you know it's like one drink and you're like well i need more now <laughs> anyway uh yeah Perfect. so let's see what else do i i i don't know how other gms do it but i like print out this whole thing for myself so i let me uh look at my notes i'll be right back 
<laughs> she disappeared. Uh, um, yeah. So, here at Saving Throw, we are an independent channel, which means that we operate because you guys are out there watching us. So we're doing all of this for you. Uh, and because of that, if you like what you see, then please feel free to give us a tip. Uh, it helps us keep the lights on. It helps us continue to go. It helps us um, this, have this light and these costumes and um, this cool GM screen. I mean, all these things that are very important to a game. Uh, and also, if you tip, there are extra cool things that you get along with that, which is our reward. So uh, as uh, tipping goes up, things get unlocked. Uh, and actually, speaking of that, we have one thing that has already been unlocked, and that thing is called Dark Resilience. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys what that is, but you know, Ooh. that's just Ooh. what's been unlocked. And we also have two lucky shots for the table. Yay. 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 Wow. So lucky like, shots. I hear a ghost in the distance. You hear a ghost? I wasn't that. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So lucky shots, um, those basically allow anyone here at the table, except for me, uh, to add 1d6 to any roll. So there's an extra die on the table now that anyone here can use. So those mm -hmm. are the two things that have been unlocked. And let's uh, go over, oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Yay! So pretty. Is it the best, most expensive uh, Moscato you've ever had? I can't we haven't wait, I haven't it tried yet. it. To, uh, We're actors, we can pretend it's as good as you need to, it to be. Woo! Yay! Yay! To potentially living through the game. Cheers! <laughs> yeah. Hopefully surviving! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll survive. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, 2018 was a good. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Sweetness. It tastes pink. It tastes like pink. It does taste pink. It's awesome. Yeah. Quite pink. Quite. It tastes pink. Do we have to guess the flavors? Oh, I like this. Yeah. What are the flavors? I could really get into this. Cinnamon. Nope. Now you've killed everyone. Cinnamon. We uh, on our on our Friday show, Jordan made sodas for us, and we had to guess the friggin' flavors. Oh. And I oh. got ginger, and I missed cinnamon because mm. they were too. They they both tasted like gingerbread. To me. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense though. Well, this I tastes like a fruit roll up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's expensive. It's good. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Um. So, let's recap real quick. Uh. For where, where we begin is that Lorraine, we have Lorraine, oh, she fell over. Uh, Lorraine here, I don't know if you can see her. But this is Lorraine Bainbridge, and this is Edwin Bainbridge, and this is Aiden, although he's a little younger here than he is now. Uh, Lorraine and Edwin and Aiden moved into Bainbridge Estate when they had to sell off all of their other homes uh, due to the, the economic issues of the 1920s. And uh, they began having trouble in this house. Now, this house was, has been in the family for a long time, but it had been empty for about 30 years because, as, as Philip over here mentioned, uh, Edwin's aunt and uncle had a horrible tragedy that had happened. And after that happened, the family didn't want to have anything to do with that house anymore. And that tragedy is that their six-year-old, or rather five-year-old daughter, Caroline, drowned. And then both, the, uh, both Elizabeth and Silas, the two parents, killed themselves. Um, and that has sort of been something that's, for lack of a better term, haunted the family for a time. Uh, but now that the, the Bainbridges, um, both Lorraine and Edwin and Aiden, are living in the house, crazy things have been happening. Uh, Aiden, the child, has been sick. Silas, or not Silas, Edwin has uh, secluded himself and he's grown angrier. Strange things have been happening. So Lorraine reached out to these four psychics here who are well known um, to be very good at what they do to come and help her solve this problem. So the psychics did arrive and they uh, have begun investigating the house. Uh, they held a seance in which they discovered, depending upon which psychic you ask, that it seems like there might be some spirits in the house, or maybe just some sort of emotional residue that is left over. Uh, and then they continued to investigate, and they've found a few different things. So let's go over, actually, everything that you guys know so far. And you guys help me with this so that uh, I, we can make sure that we get everything. So, let's see, it started off, and you guys... You guys have this picture. Yes, oh, that we yeah. found in a floorboard under mm -hmm. the master bedroom. Which yeah. we now know to be the Did bastard daughter. Adriana. 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 Mm -hmm. From Nathaniel and uh, the one. Yeah. And from Elizabeth. Elizabeth. From a dalliance. Mm -hmm. while, Elizabeth, while Nathaniel, who was, uh, what, a traveling soldier? soldier. soldier. Yes. Uh, 
showed up for a night and a single night, and she was caught mm -hmm. in his Embrace. soldierly wiles. Yes, and they yeah. they learned this from this diary, which is which is uh, Elizabeth's diary that the groundskeeper. Uh, this guy, this man, Aaron right Crane. Here. Yes, Aaron Crane. He Good worked job. for the original family. Yeah, very good. I can't even remember their names. <laughs> the worked for the original family and I've now works for the family. Them. Uh huh. <laughs> he doesn't even know his own name. Really, <laughs> clearly. Uh, yes, and they also discovered this journal here, which was in a safe in a grandfather clock. And uh, the autumn. Autumn. autumn, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. uh huh, yeah, autumn. Oh, yeah, we should talk yeah. about that because I did, I did actually post it online. But if you were here last time and you saw the safe get unlocked, yeah. but you wanted to know how it was unlocked, we didn't actually address that on camera. Uh, it, yes, the passcode for it was autumn, and uh, it was just associated with a number, so a, and I don't have it in front Alpha of me. Alpha numeric. Code. Yeah, just, you know, like A is one, et cetera, et cetera. And so the number grew to be very long because, you know, mm -hmm. U is pretty far down in that, mm -hmm. in that thing. But, um, but yes, it was a keypad zero to nine, and uh, the great Vano did input that, and a journal popped out. Don't call him great for nothing. Right? I mean, that's that's. He doesn't great call thing. himself great for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't call him great, so. <laughs> right? Oh, also, yes, here's... Here's uh, the original family. So that's Silas and Caroline and Elizabeth there. So you can see them. That is also on our Patreon and on my social media. But that is the that is the news article about um, all of their deaths. Uh, so yeah. let's see. With the new family, mm -hmm. we've discovered that their son, Aiden, mm -hmm. has uh, gotten sicker and sicker. Oh, Correct. yeah. And we now very firmly believe that it is because his father has been giving him candy s secretly and poisoning it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we found poison and a candy, and we already suspected that because she mm -hmm. had sensed that there was something on the... The other candy wrapper. The under, candy wrapper. Underneath Aiden's bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we think that his brain is being influenced by the same thing that drove Silas mad, uh, mm -hmm. which was like... Voices suggesting that, like, was something uh, mm -hmm. we 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 think maybe mm -hmm. something like from Adriana yeah. now, mm -hmm. like that that her being around and not supposed to being there, not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Actually, that made sense though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like drove him crazy and made him resent his his wife and child, uh, child and yeah. and drove him to kill, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. The majority, I mean, there are more little bits, but I think that's the majority of everything that you all have discovered so far, correct? Yes. I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think and so too. And general haunting too, like mm -hmm. blood, voices. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we did yeah. find out in the diary that apparently at some point the <coughs> maid, Mary, Mary's the cook, Mary what? I don't remember told that. Adriana that she was actually. Uh, uh, is she the current uh, cook? She was the cook at the time. She was the one who was raising. Adriana, as though it was her own daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but then, but then revealed that it was actually she, was she always daughter. Did what she wants. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was mm -hmm. spoiled. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. Some Vanos I won't <laughs> stoop to name. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right, yeah. That's. I think that's the majority of what you all have found. So. Where we ended, so, so we've gone over the information that you know, and last time, uh, it took you all to the, <laughs> to the groundskeeper's shack, which this is the groundskeeper's shack, if you would like to see it right here. Uh, that is where it took you, so that you could find uh, Elizabeth's journal, because the groundskeeper, Aaron Crane, did have it. He protected it for the family. Um, but when he went to get that journal, as you said, the room or something attacked everyone knocking him out and you all were able to survive this attack mm -hmm. uh, and read the journal but we ended last session right there so we're going to pick up right where we left off which is oh but first thank you blind thank seer you. very much thank you. that's awesome uh yeah so so we we ended right after you all reading uh the diary here of of uh elizabeth and you all are in the shack. Aaron Crane is still unconscious. 
What would you all like to do at this point? Aaron Crane is still unconscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had almost died. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. It's terrifying. Uh, I will, uh, I'll go over to Aaron Crane and like wake him up, but first I, I want to check his pockets. You know, just because he might have some keys okay. or something. Yeah. You never, yeah. you never know. You want to check know. his pockets. He's a groundskeeper. And he's very what if resistant lot? to anything <laughs> we needed before. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so you're going to use Thief. Yes, to I check his pockets, let me see here. Or Casanova. Casanova. Get, get <laughs> Casanova. Those pockets. Mm -hmm. I think that will probably work really well pockets. for you. Yeah, so let me find Aaron. Okay, so uh, he's unconscious. So I'm just going to roll the standard to die here against you um, just to see if he actually has anything in his pockets of okay. value. All right, so uh, we'll roll. Hey, that's cool. You gotta get more than a six. Nice. <laughs> you did. Very nice. Good. I just, I, you know, I, I bend down, but mm -hmm. kind of let my robe sort of cover me from the rest of the group, mm -hmm. and just kind of pat him down real quick before I wake him up. Does okay. he got anything? Fun. Uh, so you kind of go through his pockets <laughs> well and you done. find like a piece of paper that looks like he scratched something down on, but just doesn't. It seems like a note to like remember to water the plant. Uh, which is weird for a groundskeeper. <laughs> just one plan. Yeah. Just just one. One <laughs> he just forgets that one plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of them is just part of the job. Yeah. Uh, and you find some lint and a few different like yes. knick-knack type things, but you also happen to find some, some money in his pocket. I mean, he actually has a good, what year is this? He's got a good 20 pounds on him. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. He's rich. rich. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll pocket that. <laughs> Okay. It's his life savings. <laughs> or, I, yeah, I guess I don't see that. He was going to quit tomorrow. All right, but, I, but I will wake him up. <laughs> he was going to quit. You'll wake him up. Okay, real quick before you wake him up. We also have two re-rolls for the table. Yay! I'll put him over there when no one can no reach one can that. <laughs> Sorry. All right. You can't use them, I guess. That's exactly where no one at the table can reach. Well, just, you know, they're there. It's all good. Uh, all right, so you go over to wake Aaron up and uh, mm -hmm. he, shake him a little bit. He he starts to stir and says, "Oh, what, what, ah, oh, what happened?" Are you all right, sir? I oh, I feel like I had a a long night with a lot of whiskey, but other than that, I I guess I'm all right. Yes, well, it seems that your your entire shack here seems to have have animated and attacked us in various ways. This sort of thing happens in areas of great ectoplasmic disturbance. Yes, but do not fear, Ravana was here to protect you. Yes. Of all course. right, are you pulling my leg? My, oh. my shack came alive and attacked us all? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, just, just look around. It's all very technical, sir. Well, it looks to me like you all came in here and just destroyed my shack, kind of like you did to the master's study, right? Oh, well, that's not, in fact, what happened. You, revealed, you gave us this information, as was proper, and we are simply continuing to do our job. If anything, this simply proves more that there is a greater need for us than there ever, than you believed was necessary earlier. Well, all I know is that I want the family be, to be taken well care of, so well, if that's what you're here to do, then I guess that's good. Then there are a couple of questions that I believe would be very useful for you to make clear. Now we know about this, Adriano. Born out of wedlock, or something of a shame on the family, but yes. I believe that a, a gaping question has been brought up that I'm sure is on all of our minds. What happened to the girl? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but Adriana actually died the same night that uh, that Lady Bain, Bainbridge, that, that Lady Elizabeth and Lord Silas died as well. Same oh time. <laughs> and how, how did she... Uh, Pass away. She, as far as I could tell, she died in her sleep, but I'm not entirely sure. I didn't find her till the next morning with all the hubbub with the lord and lady of the house passing. Uh, it didn't find her until it seemed odd that she had not come down for the morning. And uh, what what did you do with her remains? Well, I I buried her in the graveyard. I figured she at least deserved that much. I have to admit, I'm somewhat surprised by this. Uh, it assumed simply because of the way that the father had been acting, not the father of the girl, but the husband, that she had perhaps already died and was 
somehow influencing his mind. Yep. Yeah. You all read it? Yes. He was going mad, was he not? Well, he was acting a bit out of character for the past few months, really, before he died. It sounds as though he was acting quite a great deal out of character, what what? Well, I, I suppose that is one way to put it. And y you think that Adriana was somehow uh, getting him to do something? Well, in his journal, he constantly mentions a, a girl who should not be there. I, I believe he mentioned another child, or a child. We assumed at the time it was his own daughter, but, well, this seems to fit a little more cleanly into that puzzle. I don't know if your professional opinions come to the same conclusion, but that is how I read it. That is the conclusion that Vano comes to, yes. It is. Well, I knew Adriana quite well, and she was a, a darling child, a wonderful, but now that you say that, I, I did find that it was very hard to not give her exactly what she wanted when you were around her, but then when you left, it, it didn't... You kind of questioned why you did what you did, but that just seemed to be how things were with her. I didn't think much of it. She was a cute little girl who deserved everything she got, but I suppose she could have had Lord Silas wrapped around her finger just the same. Mm. What you describe seems to surpass the normal persuasion a, a, a young girl might have over someone and speaks more to a power, almost. At least combined with the evidence of Lord Silas's growing infirmity of the mind. What was her relationship like with the other child? Oh, with Caroline. Well, it was, it was, it was a bit rough, I suppose. I, I think that she was jealous as far as I could tell, I mean, she didn't, she never knew, as far as I know, that, uh, that Elizabeth was her, her mother, but um, Elizabeth did spend a lot of time with her, and, and I could see the frustration on Adriana's face that, well, specifically when Elizabeth was with Caroline, even whenever she was with Silas sometimes. The more I think about it, I think she really didn't like Elizabeth giving anyone attention. Hmm. What about, what about the cook? The cook who raised the child as her own. Oh, Mary. Um, uh, Mary was a fine mother to her. She treated her as she would her own child. Um, and I think she was very good to Elizabeth. She was, I hired her, so I made very, I, I, was, I was very uh, specific about making sure that she would do well and, and, and not tell anyone anything. And I think that she did that. Does she, so she continue to? Work in the premises, or oh, no. has she moved on somewhere else? I believe Mary moved on. I, I think losing the, the family and, and Adriana was too much for her. She moved not long after. Hmm. Well, if there was somewhere we could get in contact with her, it would be very interesting. But if she's not around, then I don't. F I fear that we do not have too much time to send missives. Yes, perhaps we should visit the place where the child passed away. Oh, her room? Yes. Oh, well, you could do that. It would be in the servants' quarters. Hmm. I see. Okay. Um, perhaps you could tell us where in the servants' quarters? Oh, well, uh, if you go, uh, you have to go to the kitchen, so uh, through the dining room, if you go through the main house, and you can go down into the kitchens and down into the servants' quarters where the, s the storeroom is. and. Or if you look for the cook or the maid, or the butler, I suppose, any one of them can show you the way. Uh, thank thank you, you for your trouble. Yes, much appreciated. You're mm. welcome. Thank you for destroying my shack. I yes, well. I am most sorry about the shack. Here, let me uh, give you a little something uh, for your troubles. I'll hand on the 20 pounds. 20, 20 pounds? Wow. That's... Yes. Quite a, I, well, I, I very much appreciate that. I, this will be very helpful for me to put all of my things back together. Thank you ah. very much. Of He's, course. It is uncharacter uncharacteristically generous of you, Varno. Oh, they did not call me great for nothing, Horace. I believe you called yourself great, and other people were duped into continuing to call it. Uh -huh. Let's potato, shall we potato. Move, move towards the house? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Quiet. All right, so you guys are heading back to the house. He goes back into his, his uh, shack and starts trying to put things up and fix everything. Um, so you guys, as you walk into um, the entryway, 
uh, you notice something seems out of place. And uh, you hear laughing, a child laughing, and you look up. So you guys are in this room right here, in the entryway. And you look up and you see Aiden, and he's standing up on the balcony. He's on the edge, and he has a rope tied around his neck. Wow. Like, on, like on the banister? Yeah, he's up. He's up at the top. He has a rope tied around his neck, and he's kind of looking over it. And the other end of the rope is tied. It's not very long, but it's tied to the balcony. And he's he's kind of teetering over the edge, and he sees you all. And he's like, "Look, look." Aiden, Aiden, step away from the edge. That is not a fun game for little children to be playing. Wait. Right. My friend told me that it would be lots of fun that if I just jump over, no, then no, no, I can no. swing. No, no, no. Uh, uh, don't move. Uh, Vano will show you something that's even more fun than uh, the rope swing. You have something more. Did you hear that? He, Mr. Vano said. I'm going up to get him. Yes. I, I'm, I'm going to run up the stairs yep. to. And I'll, I'll okay. stay down there and just try to make sure he doesn't move. I'm going to okay. throw a knife where the rope is, yes. not near the kid, see so if I can break okay. the, cut the rope. OK, so all this is happening once. So so <laughs> let's let's see here. So you're going to run up the stairs to try to catch him, basically, mm -hmm. right? That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to distract? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to distract him. OK, and you're trying to throw a knife. So let's start. Uh, you said to, let's start here mm -hmm. first. So you're running up. Uh, let's I run up yelling, Hayden, if you continue this childish buffoonery, I shall be very cross with you. <laughs> okay, so let's make a <laughs> roll here for this. This this is basically, you're trying to get up to him as fast as you can. So I'm actually gonna roll against, we'll roll against him since okay. he's, let me find where he is. He knows how to talk to kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna roll yeah, talk against him. Talk to him like they're adults. <laughs> <laughs> so you're using, what, high society here, maybe? Yeah, I uh -huh. think that's kind of how I'm pitching it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna just give him two die because there's a lot going on. Okay, I'm gonna boost it by one. Okay, so you're, uh, are you pumping important. it? Pumping it, yes. You're pumping it, okay, so you're so pumping by take, one. Yeah. Yeah, you'll take one negative after that. Okay, he got six. I got much more Wow, and you six. aced twice. I aced twice, so. But you didn't even need, so I'm, wait. I'm rocked by adrenaline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're running. <laughs> okay, so. Save I, the child. You're running up there, and then let's uh, let's jump over to you, and you're trying to distract him, all right? So. Yep. You're doing this with Magician? Yes. OK, so I'm going to roll two as well, because there's so many things going on here. So what are you trying to distract? What are you trying to do? I I am going to, um, I'm going to do the little coin, like coin between hands and talk to him, since I've done that so many times with him. I'll be like, uh, don't move uh, at all, and I will show you how Vano makes coins mm -hmm. appear and disappear at will. Mm -hmm. OK, all right. So you're doing coin trade. He got a seven. I also got a seven. Oh, so let's reroll. 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 Uh oh, he aced. <gasps> so he got he got a nine and aced. Mm. Ten, eleven. Okay, Man. so he is not paying attention to you. He's he's he is paying attention to Horace though. He kind of hears and because Horace is running and yelling and talking about disapproval, he's he doesn't quite see what's mm. happening with you. Okay, so now you try to throw the knife. Do I take this a negative is, to my magician? Yeah, for the purposes for right now you will. Uh, for this, I'm gonna roll three because you're trying to hit something very specific with a knife. All right. Yeah. So, all right, let's try it. Mm, eight, nine, ten. Um, oh, you ten, ace, you already 13. got above ten. All right. Ooh, All right. right. So, as this is happening, so you're running up the stairs, you throw a knife, you hit right at the rope, and it start you it kind of like lands. It 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 uh, uh, sticks right in the wall or right in the uh, the balcony where the rope is. And you can tell that it's cut most of it, but it's kind of it's not completely okay. cut through yet. But as you run up there, this is all happening at once, and you're able to grab him. The the knife Whenever he does that, the rest of the rope kind of pulls through it, so the rope is entirely cut. But as all of this is happening, uh, Lorraine comes down. She she comes basically from upstairs, and she sees all of it, and she screams for Aiden. She starts freaking out, losing her mind. But you all are able to pull him off of the banister and go over to him. And she she goes to me. She's like, Aiden, what what is going on? What what is happening? Why does he have a rope around his neck like this? Compose yourself, madam. The situation is under control. It seems as though your son has gotten into his head that a fun game would involve wrapping a rope around his neck. What? What, Aiden? Why would you think such a thing? And Aiden's just kind of, he doesn't understand why everyone is so upset. And he's just, well, my friend told me that it would be a lot of fun. I, don't, I wasn't trying to do anything. But 
as all of this is happening, you actually notice, you, you see uh, just off to the side that Edwin is actually standing downstairs and he's been watching this whole thing. You just notice that. Uh, so, so Lorraine continues to freak out and she, she says, Nicholas! Nicholas, and she starts yelling for the butler. Where, and she's very angry. Where, where is Nicholas? She keeps yelling, where is everyone? Nobody seems to be anywhere. But then you hear some, some shuffling and some loud bumps and noises. And Nicholas comes out of a room upstairs. And he's, he says, what, what's, what, what is it? What is it? I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, can I help? Uh, and right behind him comes the cook as well. And the cook is like, oh, and she kind of sees what's happening but stays back. So uh, Lorraine says, just, I, I need you to, to, to take Aiden and, and make sure that he's okay. He, I, I, I don't understand what happened. And as all of this is going, Lorraine notices that Edwin is standing downstairs. And she says, Edwin, what are you doing? She's not Irish though. <laughs> what are you doing? And, um, and he, kind of, he, he kind of blinks a few times and then he comes up to her. Now, when all of this is happening, you all are still present, but Vano, you get a vision. So as Edwin is starting to go up the stairs, you instead of Edwin, you see Silas. Mm -hmm. And instead of the entryway, you see the pool outside. Mm -hmm. And instead of Aiden, you see Caroline. And you see Caroline playing by the pool. And then you see her get into the pool. And then you see her begin to struggle and, and flail about and scream and you see that Silas is just standing there watching her. He's not doing anything at all. And she continues to flail and scream, and you can tell that she's starting to drown in the pool. And still, Silas does nothing but stand and watch. And then not too long after that, a maid sees what's happening, and she runs out and jumps into the pool and, and pulls Caroline out. And then after you see all of this happening, mm -hmm. you come back and you're back in the present with everyone else. And Lorraine is still <sighs> screaming and freaking out. And now uh, Edwin seems concerned. And you notice, because it stands out to you because you're feeling it, you notice a sense of confusion, especially from Edwin. Everyone's confused, but it's very strong from Edwin. And uh, everyone, L Lorraine, continues to pull Aiden and they end up shuffling everyone out of the room because they are very ups she's very upset and everyone is trying to calm her down and calm Aiden down and you all are left in the entryway after this event. Okay, so Edwin left as well? Yes. <sighs> What's Edwin's last name? Bainbridge. Well. Is he Lord Bainbridge? Yes. Well. I believe that we need to be very careful proceeding from here on out. Obviously, whatever has gotten into these people's minds, be it for the remnants of Caroline or Adriana, it has become very dangerous at the moment. Now, I believe that we should confront again Lord Bainbridge. This has all happened before. I have had a vision. Uh, while I watched them walk up the stairs, I saw it again, but years in the past. Uh, Silas watching his daughter, Carolyn, uh, go to play in the pool and then start to struggle, to drown. And he just watched and watched as she struggled. Yes. And it was, not, it was not him, but the maid who pulled her out of the pool. Grizzly, but it is as I expect. It seems to be something of a cyclical. I don't yes. know if anyone else noticed, but Edwin was in the room the whole time and watching. So whatever was going on before is happening again now. You know, I also think, I wonder if we should think about the servants too, because what's the cook doing upstairs? Perhaps the butler. <laughs> I came to the same conclusion <laughs> myself, <laughs> although it seemed uh, unseemly to mention it. Well, I saw the butler. Nicky was laughing one time, like the other day. He was laughing by himself in the room where there was some kind of laughter when I was snooping when we first got here. Then hadn't known you could snoop yet really well. I think it's affecting the servants too or something. Seems to be affecting everyone in this foul house. Do you really think the cook is doing something with the butler? Well, I didn't want to say anything 
directly, since it is simply rumors, which I do not stoop to, but I did notice that they came out one after the other at uh, something of a staggered pace. Now, if one was trying to cover up some sort of dalliance, that would be the practical thing to do. I never would have expected it. That's so exciting. Yes, we're a large house. Not many people there. Such things happen. So as you guys are talking, that little red ball hits your shoe. And you hear that. And this is very much like what happened before when Caroline was leading you somewhere. What, did I see where it came, were you gonna say, were you gonna say something? Oh, it wasn't, if we, if we know that we felt, like we're aware that we followed it before. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how we found the, um, the first journal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the grandfather clock. What direction did it come from? It came from the stairs. Oh, let's go that way. Okay, so you guys head up the stairs? Yeah. All right, and as you uh, get up the stairs and you start to go down the hall, you hear uh, this, and it's going off. It's going off to the side over here. So you all want to follow it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now let us. Now, as we go, we should be careful. If there is something that is trying to tell us what is going on here, or that simply has left the impression of uh, positivity and, and a wishness of knowing what is going on there, there is also definitely some sort of malevolence. I do you suggest that we all stay yeah. together for energy's sake. Yes, especially uh, if uh, there's another ghost yes. in this house. Quite so. Ghost. Yeah. So, uh, as you follow it, you see that it, it's leading you to a room. And uh, we'll say it's, it's this one here. Uh, it's leading you into that room. So do you all go inside? Yeah. yeah. Who's been in that room? Is this the, it's the uh, library, right? Uh, the this we fought is off. a library, but mm-hmm. yeah. Did we fight off the uh, room in that one? Because we yeah, used we the fought. antlers? Yeah, we did. Yeah. You might have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember this room. We're back. <laughs> this is the room we trashed. Uh, we trashed. <laughs> it's still trash. <laughs> so you go in, and once you enter the room, you hear you hear this noise, and a book falls off of a shelf and comes open right in front of you. And as you start to look at that book, you get a vision all of a sudden. So you're trying to look at it, but you don't see the book anymore. Instead, you see the Bainbridge Estate, and it's a very dark and stormy night, and you see someone banging at the door. And then you see the door open, and you recognize the person who has opened the door as Elizabeth. And she opens the door wider when she sees who it is, and a man goes into the house. And you see this man, and he's soaking wet, and he, uh, he, he looks very tired and worn, but as he looks up at Elizabeth, you see something change on her face, as if a spell had been cast upon her. And you can tell immediately that she is completely taken by him, but you can also see the maid at the house looking at this man, and she looks very concerned because it, it appears that what the maid sees and what Elizabeth is seeing are two very different things. And then the vision is gone, and you again see the page in front of you. I'm sorry, I, I was somewhere else for a moment. I slap you on the back a few times. Are you okay? <clears throat> yes, yes. This seems to be some sort of primer of beasts of some sort. Cambions, alufiends. Cambions are stunningly gorgeous creatures who are half human and half succubus incubus. They are cunning, beautiful, and are known for their ability to persuade any human to do their bidding. Basics. While Nephilim, the offspring of human and an angel, are widely known, many do not know about their demonic counterparts, the children of a human and a demon, or more specifically, a succubus or incubus. These creatures are called cambions and alufiends, and they are much rarer and more powerful than, than their angelic counterparts. Cambions, being the males, and the alufiends, the females, are conceived via the intermingling of a human woman and a male demon, or vice versa. They're extremely rare, as the odds of becoming pregnant with a cambion after intercourse with a demon is very low. 
In addition, because of their inhuman nature, many cambions die in the womb. Powers. Cambions have special powers bestowed upon them due to the demon blood that flows through their veins. These powers can include telekinesis, teleportation, supernatural persuasion, flame manipulation, shape-shifting, necromancy. Keep them more. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Illusions! Slash, it's right in the middle of the book, so I don't know if it was more. <laughs> Illusions slash manipulations. Typically, each individual cambion will have one dominant ability. Cambions do not come fully into their powers until after reaching puberty, but they, they can possess weaker abilities if they are taught how to utilize them or discover them of their own accord. Demon state. Cambions can enter something called a demon state during times of distress, sadness, anger, etc. Once they learn control, they can enter this state at will. If a cambion is extremely angry, upset, or distressed, it might enter this state during this time its humanity departs, and it becomes a being with no conscience or morals. It feels no form of guilt, remorse, or regret for any of its actions. The cambion becomes vicious and sadistic, vindictive and ruthless. Above all else, it becomes unstoppable. When in the demon state, a cambion will have full possession of all its demonic powers. This makes it extremely difficult to fight, defeat, or kill a cambion in its demon state. In fact, it is near impossible. When cambions come out of their demon state, they are very weak and vulnerable, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Usually, they will only have fragmented memories of what they did while in the state, defeating a cambion. While cambions are granted dark powers because of their demon blood, they are still part human, which means they are susceptible to mortal death through injury, suffocation, poison, etc., etc. But mortally killing a cambion is only the first step, as they become even harder to dispatch as a spirit. There is only one rumored way to defeat a cambion spirit, but it is not substantiated. You know, it must be consecrated with the blood of two lovers, freely given. If the cambion, our alu fiend, is in its demon state, it must be fought to forced to revert and show itself. This could theoretically be achieved in any number of ways, but the prevailing idea is that an appeal must be made to its human desires or needs. Once it has left its demon state and physically manifested, it must see its own reflection in the consecrated mirror. It will then become trapped in the mirror, at which point the glass must be shattered, sending the demon back to hell. Only one such account of this having ever been successfully completed exists, but it is from a second-hand source, and everyone directly involved was killed. Well, that seems fully irrelevant to our situation. <laughs> no, I'm simply joshing with you. It seems quite, <laughs> quite likely to be related. <sighs> what was that bit at the end? Yes, we seem to. Which part? The, the last thing you read. Only one such account of this ever having been successfully completed exists, but it is from a second-hand source. Huh. Everyone directly involved was killed. Yes, that bit. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Oh, Vano. Vano. So, uh, after you finish reading that, you, all of a sudden, the room goes away, and you see the master bedroom. But it looks like it's decorated a little bit differently, and you see Elizabeth there. And Elizabeth is crying. She's in full grief, and it's actually something you have felt before in this house. She is sobbing. Then you see, at the doorway, Adriana comes in, and she goes over to Elizabeth, and she tugs on her dress and says, please come play with me, come play with me. But Elizabeth continues to cry, and mostly ignores her, and then eventually, as Adriana continues to pull on her clothes, she just pushes her away, and you see Adriana, disappointed, sad, maybe a bit angry, wander out of the room. <laughs> but then as she wanders out of the room, all of a sudden you notice that she turns and she looks directly at you. And then she comes flying at you. And... Can you got us to look, can you give me goosebumps? <laughs> well, you might need goosebumps at this point because as that happens, this room starts from the ceiling, right at the crack where the wall and the ceiling meet, water starts to pour into the room. And this is something that all of you see. You are now back in the room, and it is filling up. Uh-huh. Uh, 
this this is not good. I believe we should get out of this room post haste. Yes, yes, yes. You guys go to the door? Yeah, I'll go and try the door. It is locked. The door is locked. The door is locked. The room is continuing to fill with water. Uh, Uh, I'll use Snoop. Okay, Uh, what are you trying to do? uh, I guess find, I don't, is it locked with a key? It, uh, not that you can tell, it's just completely locked. I mean, there, there is a keyhole. There could be, could be that it's locked with a key, but it just will not and budge. That's the only entrance. Uh, yes, that is the only entrance and exit. So I'll try to find something to, to... I use my stiletto knife. Would you be able to use that? Can you give me To that? unlock the door? Or do yeah. you want to try to use it yourself and then I'll... No, you want to try it first? Because you have good snoop. Well, we have two chances if you use it and try it and then I'll... Try... The water is now uh, yeah, filling the room <laughs> yeah. up to your ankles. Uh, <laughs> let's... Uh... Do you want to try that? You guys cool with that? Yes. Or, yeah? You want me to take it? Um, or do you want to try it and then I'll go? I'll try it, I'll try it. And then you, yeah. Okay, so you're trying to unlock the door and what are you using, your knife still? My knife, yeah. Okay, so you're trying to, we'll say you're trying to pry it open. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. All right. Oh, you ace, very good, I got six nice. total. So you go over and uh, you, put your knife on the door and you start to try to push it open and you actually see that the door does pop open, but then it slams shut again oh. every time you do it. All right. Something I'm... else is holding it shut. Hey, everyone. I want to try and grab one of the guns off the wall okay. and jam it in and pry it open. Okay. These guns, they may not be loaded like proper English gun, but well, let's hope they have good make. Okay, the water is now at your knees. All right, um, I guess I'm rolling Hunter. Hunter? This okay. One. Are you hyperventilating in the corner? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in the corner, I'm just, st- I'm just standing there. All right. Eight. 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 Okay, so uh, <laughs> as you go over to pry the door, you actually start to, so it's a wooden door, you start to chip pieces off of the door, like right at the door jam, and, but you notice that even when you do that, the door still stays shut. But you are actually able to start hacking into the door, but it's not enough to get you out of the room. Okay, I'm gonna do an uh, energy read then. Okay, the water is now filling up to your waist. Uh. Whole room is filling. So what are you reading, what are you looking uh, for? I need to, f- to find what the source is that's making it happen. Uh, the source of, of the water filling up? Um. So you're just trying to see what the energy of the room is? Is that what you're trying to figure out? More of like the source that's like the spiritual oh, source. Oh, that's holding. Sure, yeah. sure. You're trying to feel what the energy is in the room, basically, that is causing this, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about four? Okay. Okay. So you got way more than my four. <laughs> um, uh, so you just feel this sense of of anger and hate. And, and playfulness and mischievousness and mischievousness, mischievousness? Mischievousness. mischievousness. Whatever, all those things. And uh, you, you, you can feel it's very strong in this room. And it's overpowering. Mm. And the water continues to fill. It is now uh, okay. up to your chest. I, I, I want to yell, Vano, you're a coward. Surely you've seen some other f- place of egress from this room. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Get yourself together, Beckwith. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna look around. <laughs> okay, what are you looking for? Uh, if there's another place of egress. <laughs> oh, uh, to, to escape here? Yeah, is uh, there a window? Uh, there is a window. Do you wanna go and try the window? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're using Thief yes. to try and what, break the window? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So go over to the window and uh, yeah. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. <laughs> Oh, I aced. Erica, you oh, did you. you. Too. Very nice, so I got 10. Look, we got a raid from Erica. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Erica. Oh, and yeah. also thank Dark you, Dark and Stormy. And Stormy. Ooh, nice. Thank you. Ooh, nice. Nice. Uh, I got 13. I got 12. 12. Do you want to re-roll? Yeah, but this is my take to re-roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're going to re-roll? Uh, yeah. Oh my, a re-roll uh, is... It's my uh, fault. Uh, okay, <laughs> there we go. Oh wait, like, uh, there's there going yeah. in there. <laughs> no, oh, 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 we missed. Now All throw right. it to me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so you are rolling to break the window. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, I aced both my die. Oh, wait, oh. wait you, got one ace? Number? you, right, it was my, my roll, so I had a 13, so you go. I was thinking we were doing something new. Right. Six, seven, uh, eight, nine, five, 10, 11. 11. You need to roll more than a two. 
That's Yay! a three! Yay! All right. Three's so you, decidedly more than two. You go over to break the window, uh -huh. and you actually manage to break it. Okay. And as you break it, the glass comes back and reforms. Oh my god. <laughs> Can we calm down the energy? So You're good at, that. at this point, you all are starting, you have to swim. You can no longer keep your feet on the ground and keep um, your head on the water. It, I can, I can try to, I can, um, it'd be empathy again, but it's, it would be, uh, to try to, uh, to calm the to energy. Co yeah. To, okay. Cause I've now absor unfortunately absorbed a lot of that. Okay. So you're going to roll to try to calm the energy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Ooh. you're trying 12, to 13, kill 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 18, 18, not ace, 1920. Oh, good. I will, um, I'm gonna... Do have the shots, too? Oh, wait, yeah. The little shots we got, the hot shots? What are that? The lucky shots. lucky shots? Okay. St. George is a strong swimmer. Yeah, so we're gonna you... die soon. I'll take so, one of those. So before you do that, before you do that, you are you are, are getting ready to try to calm this energy, but then all of a sudden, uh, you see the door start to shake, and it starts to shake a lot harder, and it starts to kind of fly open, and then it completely flies all the way open. The water comes pouring out, and you all go pouring out into the hall with it. <sighs> And then, oh. as you as you try to collect yourselves, you notice you are not wet, and there's no water anywhere. I'm in a bit over my head, guys. <sighs> that was unlocked by you, chat. That's your dark resilience. Well, thanks, oh. guys. What? <laughs> I, need some, I need some whiskey. Yeah. Oh what? yes, let's refill. <laughs> There's also more Moscato. But would you like? Man, sure, I'll take a little whiskey. I am <sighs> actually no, drained. No, that's the only one. You want some whiskey? We're <laughs> alive. Thank you. We're gonna <laughs> take a quick drink break. <laughs> and now we are going to die. Vano. <laughs> Don't <laughs> <laughs> cry, Vano. It just made me cry. That's the closest he's coming to death in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do this. <laughs> Uh, pass that down. Do you want like this? I do kind of want some makers. Yeah. It's like we're, we're alive. There's something evil in this house. I will take some Moscato here. Just <laughs> oh, thanks. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Is it TJ's? <laughs> the best of TJ's? Mm -hmm. I'll make his mark it up when I'm done with the moment. Woo! Okay. Do you, do you, you good? Do you I'm good. I'm good. Uh, no, I have lipstick all over my hands. Cool. Uh, okay. Yes, so you all are in the hallway. There's no water, and you're not wet. And the door seems to be fine. The window is fine. Nothing seems to be out of place. Oh my gosh. Thank you. This is absurdity. <coughs> There's some sort of abomination that has occurred in this house. <laughs> it is that uh, Camberon, or whatever it was, that you, that you read about. Something I've never encountered before. And I'm not sure what to do. <sighs> well, I think that it is perhaps the best course of action to try to get those who continue to live in this house and ourselves out of this house. No, no. It says in, in the book there's a mirror and the lovers and blood. We don't even know if the report is, is even actually... I, I can't even find the words, but, but the second hand, for God's sake. Thank you, Blind Seer. Thank you. Watch you. This is first hand. I'm going to die. Did you not see me almost die? Oh. The people who first hand encountered whatever it was if we are to believe the book, are in fact dead, which makes me believe that getting out of this situation is perhaps the best course of action. I'm gonna come in between both of you and put a hand on both of your shoulders to calm you down. Oh. You saw yourself that the book flew off the shelf and opened to that page. Could have been any page, could have been any book, but it was that one. In a circumstance that sounds mysteriously yes, yes. like the one we are dealing with ourselves. It would be foolish to call it pure coincidence. You know, we need to deal with this. We have to deal with this directly. This isn't going to stop. Other people are going to die. Yes. Right? Yes. We got to deal with this. Perhaps you're correct. We can't act like little silly children people don't take seriously. Yes. Ali's right. We were brought here for a reason. Yes. We can't serious. leave these people. I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm, I'm a magician. I'm serious. 
Maybe six. I put another hand on Bono to like just to give him a little extra. <laughs> mm-hmm. Calm down. Yes. yes. Great Bono. You can no longer are in danger, Bono. Yes. You can feel her energy. She's okay. Well, <laughs> really, if we are to believe the account as it is written down, then what we need is a mirror. A mirror. Consecrated mirror, specifically. Consecrated. One that has been consecrated with the blood of two lovers freely given. We need to find some lovers. <gasps> Maybe Nikki and the cook. I, I was thinking perhaps the husband and wife who lived here, but I suppose we can. <laughs> <laughs> find out if they're really doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it just, seems that our, our I mean, snoopy gossipness has suddenly become professionally pertinent. <laughs> I mean, they might be doing it. Yes. I mean, well, it must be freely thing. given. So, yeah, we could try them. If not, you know. Lady Lorraine and Lord Edwin, I'm pretty sure, have engaged in... Surely at some point. Yeah. Engaged they, they, in what? <laughs> I don't believe Lord Edwin, after everything that has happened, will be willing... Magic, Ellie. <laughs> will be Magic. willing to deal with us on pretty much any topic. Perhaps that is right. You think we had best try our hand with the butler and the cook? Perhaps. We could try both, but I just I feel like the Bainbridges are not really happy with each other right now, you know what I'm saying? Whatever we do, we need to be very careful about it. I now believe, against my better judgment, that, for now, it will be most prudent to act as though whatever is causing these forces is aware of us and malevolent yes. and will act to stop us. Yes. Well, we will need a mirror. Mirror. Yes. I have not seen many in the house. I haven't seen That's any true. in the house. Notably lack of them. My hair probably looks terrible. Well, it, it looks sounds good. like a we little should. wet, perhaps. Thanks, thanks, Bono. You're so sweet. Such a doll. Perhaps I normally should. have a mirror on my <clears throat> person, but I... well, it's a large house. Yes. Mm. Let's explore, Let's and I'll use my snoop. Mm. She's we so good at snooping. <laughs> they must have a mirror for a, v- a vanity or, or a bathroom of some sort. Um, so, before you all do that, another tier has been unlocked. <gasps> this one yeah. is called Shaken and Rattled. That doesn't so, sound good. <laughs> well, actually, it is good for you all because so many crazy things have been happening here at the house. The servants are shaken and rattled, which means they are a little bit easier to deal with. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. That's yeah. Thank you, Chad. One after Talk six St. George on. <laughs> <laughs> so this means that oh. they will have one die less whenever you, if, if you are to interact with them in such a way. Yes. So, apropos, we are looking for two servants who have been shaken and rattled. Also, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I know, and maybe shaken and rattled more ways than one. You know what I'm saying? You know what? <laughs> Shake, rattle, and roll. What? In the hay. <laughs> no hay in this house. All right. You wouldn't know that. <laughs> What is it? We also had to get, we had to appeal to the humanity, the, what the human side wants, right? Yes. And I think, I think she, I think it was her that was, I can't remember if it was her that was talking to me or if it was Carrie, but toys. I asked what... It certainly wouldn't it hurt to continue to have things that will remind the, the being that it was once partially human or uh, whatever. Yeah. Isn't that how... Well, it is fortunate that I am great with children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say we continue to find the child's room. See if there's any sort of remnants, something they left hidden, or... Yeah. The, the uh, Adriana's room. Indeed. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and the uh, look for a mirror along the way. Well, there's none in the bathroom, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> if we run away... Sorry, what was the butler's name? The um, butler's Graham? name is Nicholas. Nicholas? Is he the one we think is Kabonkin? Or was it? It was yeah. the, the butler and the What kitchen. did you just say? Kabonkin. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a technical term. Go back to Horace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. The two that we believe are canoodling. <laughs> oh, we that say. sounds worse. That's the butler. <laughs> and the cook. And we think they were they, they were the ones who ran out I mean, together? That's, they were I the ones who ran, ran out together. together. Yeah. Yes. The well, well, if we see the butler, I shall chat with him. Man to man, I have a, we, we can have a, a good gentlemanly chat about uh, various canoodling. endeavors, canoodling conquests, Well, as it were. If they are unwilling to give blood and 
and the Lord and Lady of the house aren't, I am willing to give it. I believe lovers in this case is more of a specific. I don't. I'm willing to fall on my sword. That is all I'm saying. Very well. All right, so where would you all like to go first? Um, what was that? Oh, were you going to say? Well, towards the, the servants' quarters, but which was through the kitchen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Through the kitchen, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay, so you all are going to go down to the kitchens. As you do enter the kitchen, you do see the cook, because she is cooking, as she is wont to do. Uh, she is the only, where's the cook go? She is the only cook, so she's pretty much, <laughs> she has to be it. there all the time, yes. And she says, oh, can I help you with something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we, were, we was wondering where, where the servants, we, we we need to look around and we wonder where the servants' quarters are. Oh, oh, well, right, right that way. Appreciate it. It's quite pertinent to our continuing investigations. Oh, whenever you say that, she kind of, you remind her very clearly of everything that's going on, and she doesn't like it. And so she just kind of goes, right. And then she goes back to stirring the pot that she is, what looks like stew of some sort that she's currently hurriedly trying to cook. Hey. Yes. So, so, you doing okay over here? You a little worried? You look a little worried. Can I pour? Can I make you a martini? Uh, well, that was quite a bit of things that you uh, listed all at once there. Um, I, 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 I mean, I, uh, I, I have a lot of work to to get done. Um, I uh, don't like the things that have been happening in this house lately. So that does worry me quite a bit. And also, not entirely sure about you four. Uh, that's a bit worrying, and I also have no clue why you're down here. Mm, yes, high stress situations lead to heated blood, do they not? Um, <laughs> I, I suppose they do. Well, I feel like you got a little flush to your cheeks. It's kind of like, is there a special someone in your life? Oh, I think you might be no noticing the heat from the stove. Oh, yeah, but you look so, you look like you're blooming. You look gorgeous. Oh, well, Quite a flat hour, aren't ya? Well, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you move on for a second? We'll just let a little girl talk for a second. All right, so you... Are sure you do not need Bano's assistance? Yes. Come you back could, with. You I, I am very good with this. <laughs> as he's pulling it away. I'm good with this sort of situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you uh, are talk. <laughs> trying to get information, yeah. basically, I'll cook. Okay, so let me find my cook here. Um, okay. So she will be using three instead of her normal four okay. uh, die. Uh, yeah. So so let's we'll start here. So you probably I assume will be using flapper. Yeah. For this. Like, okay. Let's talk like get, get the goods at a party. All right. Yeah. So so <laughs> ask girls. ask your next question. We'll make this the beginning of our okay. social conflict here. So there a special someone. Okay. <laughs> oh. Five, nine, ten. I got, 13. I got 13 and, and I, I aced it. Yeah! Whoa. And another ace. Oh, you aced it. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna get 19. Easy see. victory. You, 21. Very, you completely. She is completely startled by that question. Not something that people normally ask her. Oh, no, it's not British death. And she, no, no, it is not at all. <laughs> this the least, is, especially in this sort of house. And this she brought to you by Maker's Mark whiskey. <laughs> she immediately drops her her spoon all the way into the stew, and and oh. she she kind of looks at you for a second and then goes oh, uh, and then she goes and gets another spoon and starts trying to to spoon the other spoon <laughs> out. I guess fish fish the spoon out. Uh, well, um, I, I mean. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a young, well, maybe not as young as I used to be, but I'm a, a woman who, who still likes a, a, a good uh, romance every now and then. Um, so, yeah, maybe there's someone. Well, I can see why you're adorable when you're flustered. Oh, well. She blushes, and then she goes back to stirring. Except now she's stirring with the. Are you gonna start using I'm, Casanova? I'm like leaning, <laughs> you know, I'm like leaning on my thing, like right by the kitchen, like so. What's he look like? Oh, I need to roll again. <laughs> yes, roll again. So now she's rolling with two die. Uh, she got six. You got way more than that. You <laughs> aced one okay. as well. Okay. You're, right. you're in full on flapper mode. Now. <laughs> yeah, There's I'm like, no stopping. I'm like twirling. I'm like, so. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, well, he's, uh, he's, he's a bit older, mm. but, but in a, in a s silver 
box kind oh. of way, of course. And uh, he's he's very uh, good at his job. He's very good at it, and and he's uh, he's. A bit stocky, but in in a way that you know that it that kind of gets you all flustered, oh, sort it's of thing. Yes, yeah. strong. <laughs> yes, well, yes, a lot stronger than you would think by the way he looks, of course. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, it's very, it's very um, it's startling sometimes, oh. <laughs> but in a good way. Oh, I think we amazing. we left. We went to the okay, service quarters. Yeah. You went to the service. I was starting to wonder if she was still you came with us. So Okay, so you're asking. Yeah. Okay, so now she just has one time. <laughs> we left her to do the gaspy gasp. Three, you uh, thirteen. Got way more than that. Okay, and she. So you ask her that, and she kind of looks at you, and she looks around the room and makes sure there's nobody. All right. Yeah, for promise, you won't tell no one. Okay, because this has actually been a secret I've been having to hide for quite a while now. And uh, I really want to tell someone, and you're here, and I don't, you don't really know anyone here, so I think it might be all right. But it's actually, it's the butler. <gasps> oh my gosh, I get it. Oh my gosh, he's such a cute, you're doing so great. I mean, not that I'm trying to be on. Oh, of course. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I thought I saw a glow. I'm so glad. Now no, ask her for blood. <laughs> <laughs> I just go like, I'm like, don't worry, I won't tell a soul yet. <laughs> yep. I kind of like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it, I love it. Well, I'd love to dish some more later. I gotta go join my friend. Okay. Okay. So as you wander off, she's kind of like humming to herself as she's she stares. <laughs> okay, so you guys are going down into the servants' quarters. I love a good romance. Okay. Uh, yes, good romance. It's always good. So um, you come out into a hall, and it's a very long hall. There's a very long rug on this hall, and there are a bunch of doors, and there's a door at the end. Um, and all these doors look the same. My God, I hear a ghost. Wait, that's Harold snoring over there. Oh. <laughs> Harold. Actually, though, you you say that, and you do hear something. It just sounds like a little bit of movement behind you. But you look around, and none of you see anything. But then you hear it again, and it just kind of feels like a, a rustling. And actually, you look back once again, and you notice that the rug seems to... Uh, be lifted up, kind of at the end, closest to the kitchen. Did someone trip over the runner coming in here? No. I believe you would have noticed such a calamity. Hmm. I will uh, carefully approach it. Oh, when you approach it, uh -huh. uh, actually, so you looked back to say that to everyone, uh -huh. but now that you look over there, it's it actually looks like there's something under the rug, and it's <laughs> lifted up a bit bigger than it was before. So you go over to it? Yeah. Yes. It starts to move towards you. Uh, this, everyone is seeing the rug, right? Uh, do we all see it? Do, yes, you all see it. Is it um, moving toward me quickly? Uh, well, did you stop when it started to move? Yes. It stopped for a moment, but now it's starting to move again. And it's edging a little bit, but it's starting to get faster as it goes faster towards you. It's uh, coming towards me. <laughs> you see that it's coming towards me. It's uh, coming. Yeah. Are you staying there? No, I'm gonna start backing up. You're backing up? Yeah. Okay, it's still, it's continuing to move, and it's moving towards all of you. I'm now. also scared. <laughs> Horus! Very well! <laughs> Let's take it head on, then! <laughs> so You don't scare me more than the Germans! <laughs> and I want to uh, slam a foot down on it. Come over to it and just... On it? Oh, uh, maybe oh. not on it! Okay. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, it's like a squirrel. Oh. Okay, so it is the squirrel. How big, wait, how big is that? It's getting oh, bigger. Right. Oh, oh then okay, yeah, yes, I guess yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so you're trying to stomp it with what? With my foot. <laughs> Good <laughs> English feet. So you have the option here to try. They've been to through France and Germany. <laughs> to try to use one of your crochets. and through some of Ireland, but not Scotland. <laughs> or you can use your one do anything die to do this if you would like. I guess I'll one do anything. Okay. All right. It's not, I mean, I guess I could make an argument for Hunter, but Hunters don't stamp okay. on things. One Let's do anything. Ah! Oh! Uh, He'll be fine. That was five uh, dice, 12, so. 13, 14, 15, 16. Cool, yeah, I mean, I can, can ace, ace it. four times. Oh, no, wait. 
on the do anything, you can't ace, right? Is that, I'm pretty sure that's what I said. Well, I'm not oh. gonna roll then. <laughs> yes. So I mean, I will, let's roll. Do you try to four. do that? Nailed it. Do you try to do that? I already said I tried to okay. do it. <laughs> Whenever you go over to step on it, the rug, more of the rug than there actually is, it, it co comes out to the side and it starts to try to pull you under. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and at the this same time, it's continuing to move towards the rest of you. Oh, I no. grab you by your, by your jacket and try to pull you away. St. George comes up and just starts barking at the rug. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're trying to pull. Um, let's, mm. I'm trying to think of what you oh, have. Uh, I feel like you could use uh, could flapper do? because you know whenever you're dancing, you have to know how to swing your partner around. That's true. And you gotta hang on tight. And fix it was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you Good. spin them out. So let's see. This is a little different because you're you're you are pulling against the rug, but you're also using him to help. So let's. This will be uh, less die that you're rolling okay. against. Oh, I, I, Ooh. Ten, eleven, twelve. You've won. 13, Double A's. 14, 15, 15, 17, 18. No, you've. I don't like hey guys, you know, completely I just, killed it. I enjoyed you this won. campaign. Okay. <laughs> All right. It was fun. It was cool. I got somewhere to be. <laughs> so the rug starts to pull him in more, and it kind of starts to pull you with it. But it's still moving towards the two of you. Are there any, like, are there any like statuary in this corridor or anything? In the servants' quarter, there isn't really. There, it's it's pretty bare. It's just the there's a bunch of doors. There are a bunch of different doorways. Uh, so really, the best thing you could grab would be like a doorknob here. I've got Snoop and World Traveler. How how uh, far off Maybe the ground is this rug coming? Maybe. Um, at this point, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it looks sort of human size. It's not full, but it's like if if someone was crawling, that's kind of what it looks like. The bump of it that that's coming at you, but then he's sort of on one side being pulled into another chunk of it. Um, it's a haunted rug. <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch out for those haunted rugs. I really want to climb off the off the floor, but I guess there's nothing to climb onto. I mean, this hall isn't very wide. You could try to like spider monkey your way. Yeah, I'm gonna spider monkey my myself up. Okay, so this this, this is not against this, hall. <laughs> this thing. You're just trying to get up, so this will go against two. Okay. So I got six. Well, you ate twice. You got six. Well, start climbing up. No rug munching for Vama. Yeah, so you guys. Back with you, coward! You can see him. Yeah, because you're down it. here. Can you just see him? He's got two hands on one side and feet on the other side. He's just like this, <laughs> getting away from the rug. Not this time. Not oh, this no. time. No. <laughs> All right, uh, so the, the rug is continuing to move at you and uh, getting very close to you. Uh, <laughs> if you continue to stay where you are. I don't, I don't do you can run. I can run? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can run if you want. Uh, I don't feel like that's what I would do. I just don't know what to do. There's chaos going on. <laughs> and Vano just... Yeah, that's what you should do. Escape. Abandoning. Escape. Mm-hmm. Um, or not. Or you can try to help uh, Ellie pull Horace out. Horace is. I'll try to help. Okay, trying so, to keep his composure um, throughout all this. I think Super that British. you could uh, very easily use Snoop here. It's okay. sort of the same thing if you're if you're sneaking about. Um, I feel like you can use it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so we'll make it work. Um, this one will go. So you, you're helping. So we're just going to go against two. So four. Ah, you aced it, Yay. and you got the five without that Yay. ace. So, uh, you go over and you grab his arms as well, <gasps> and the two of you together are able to pull him out of the rug, and you guys go tumbling back away from it a little bit, but it is still moving towards you. But you see, uh, after that happens, you notice that the door at the very end of the hall f has flown itself open. <gasps> so now we run. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. scoop my way, scoot away okay. get as high as I can and scoot across. I like it. All right, so you guys are all running for the door. Discretion! <laughs> oh, okay. So as you, yes, like you cartoon characters, start to run, and as you're running, run, the, Saint George, run! The uh, rug continues to get faster and faster, and it's coming behind you. And you guys keep running. So everyone, do me a favor, and uh, everybody roll three die. Six-sided die? Yeah, okay. six-sided die. <laughs> okay, and tell me what everyone is. Aces count. Aces count seven. I roll a three, 13. a three, and a three. I got a nine as well. I also got a nine. 14, 15. We okay. all got nines? 
15. For That's creepy to 15, me. 15, Wow, okay, so this is to see. Oh, Ooh. God. No! You rolled a nine. I rolled a nine. One of them was an ace, so. Okay, uh, I got a 13. 13. So you, you pass everyone by, and you get <laughs> into the, the room. Yeah, and you turn around, and you see that everyone is falling behind you, and the rug is getting a whole lot closer, and they're trying to get there. Uh, and, and, as you get past the door, the rug catches up with the three of you and it knocks all of you down and tries to start pulling you knocks back. Knocks me off the... Yeah, it knocks <laughs> you off. Just Basically, it, it hits the wall and you come falling oh. down at that point. Um, so, you can try to help pull them in if you want. Yeah, yeah. The, the flapper, like, there's big groups of us who would do dancing in the halls. Uh-huh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, so that's against uh, a seven. That's uh, 18. Okay, so you reach for them, and they're also, I assume, trying to reach for you as the rug is trying to pull them back. And as you do, you all notice that there's more than just Ellie helping you. You can feel other hands grabbing you and pulling you in. And as all of you manage to get inside, the door slams shut, and you hear the rug thud up against the door. And then everything goes silent. <laughs> That was terrifying. That was another event unlocked by Dark Resilience. Thank you, Chad. Nice. Oh, I am. Well, That's such is, an evil laugh. <laughs> this event has made it abundantly clear that I am not as young as I once was. Did anyone else feel like, like there was more than just you? Yeah, there was some help. It's very handsy, yes. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Or at least, whatever it is that is against us, is opposed by something that seems to be for us and hope that we are successful. Can Let I us hope that these things can encounter each other to our benefit. Can I do some of the writing to ask who we can thank for helping? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> all right, so you're making automatic writing roll. Yeah, against five. 10. Uh. <laughs> 10, okay, so. Uh, don't forget, we have rerolls. Oh. If you want to reroll, that is also an option. Maybe I should save that for something. You can else. save it. All right, so you get your paper out that and you start one. to write, hmm. and you draw big circles, <laughs> yes. and you I'm wait for <laughs> a little while, and nothing comes to you. You think that maybe whatever it was just is no longer here, so your spirit guide can't quite register what it is you're asking. Um, what? Is there a distinguishing feature of this room at all that we can tell? That um, this room is very clearly a bedroom, and mm. it uh, it seems, I don't think we have any of those here, It's it uh, seems to just be a pretty standard uh, servant's bedroom. There's mm -hmm. one bed uh, that's kind of in the corner, it's just a little twin size bed. There's a dresser, uh, and there seems to be a rocking chair that is in here as well. There's not a whole lot else that you can actually find. Okay. I'm gonna, I, just by looking at I'm going to pull out my crystal ball and see if I can get a vision of the room that was Adriana's. Okay. All right, sounds good. Can I just, I'll wait. So, make your die roll. Mm. Oh, you Ooh, aced it well twice. Done. That's pretty good. Mm, I aced it once. Nine. Wow. 28. I got 11. 28. Okay, so you're trying specifically, you're asking the crystal ball to show you what room was yes. Adriana's? Yeah. Okay. All right, so if you've not played Mysterium, then you don't know that in Mysterium, one person plays as a ghost. And that ghost gives the psychics visions, and they use something called vision cards, which is how I'm utilizing this for the Great Vano's power. <laughs> so you will receive a vision card. Um, if one of us dies, do we get to play the ghost? Yep. <laughs> that's how it works. You just stand behind. <laughs> no. Boo. <laughs> boo. All right. Boo, boo. So this is what you see. All right. Seeing uh, a plain room, uh, uh, soft walls, brown, featureless, but a, a rack, a coat hanger of sorts with a key hung in the middle of it. Uh, images of keys, but also uh, notes like music 
on the walls, a single window, and uh, several pairs of shoes uh, in front of the door. Hmm. Uh, does anything about that uh, strike me? As yeah, it peculiar? actually looks very much like this room to you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it it seems from what you can tell, it seems like all the rooms you guess, and just from mm -hmm. other houses you've seen like this before, that all the rooms are fairly similar. Mm -hmm. The only difference would just be whatever the person who's living there might bring into it. Mm -hmm. um, so this this reminds you very much of one of the of any of the rooms that can be down here, um, and maybe it just makes you think of the location it could be. Hmm. Well, uh, uh, perhaps I could help hone in on wherever it is that Adriana would have kept her things. Often the pendulum can help lead to such things. I want to kind of use it like dousing rod ass to get an idea of just like the general area that was like okay. where she would have stayed and stuff. So you want to use it essentially to walk around this area and mm -hmm. see where it reacts? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So uh, let's see... Um, we'll say that you start to walk and let's see if you Oops. notice anything. I got a 10 and I ace 13. I got a 10. Nice. So, okay. no aces. So. so as you continue to uh, walk around, you just don't feel like the pendulum is really giving you anything solid one way or another. Go ahead and snoop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just see if there's anything useful. Okay. So you're snooping just to see. Well, you said there's only a dresser in, in this room. In this room? room? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, in this room. Dresser. Mm -hmm. All right. So. I don't know. Three. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, you aced it twice Ooh. already. Yeah. Such a wow. good snoop. I can't right. even Beat believe it. Beat the three and then some. So you go over to the dresser and you pull it open and uh, there's not much in this dresser actually. You notice that it has a lot of dust in it, but then you look back in a corner. Ooh, blind seer! Hey. Thank oh, you very thank much. You. Tip blind seer. You look back at a corner and... Pr pretty appropriate user <laughs> right? name for this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Did you plan that? <laughs> um, but you notice that there seems to be one earring and it looks like a really nice earring, like a, a little uh, a diamond earring of some sort, something you would not expect to find in the servants' quarters that is in that corner there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I totally don't know. I was in the shade. It's all good. Cut the water. Are there any in there? No. Please. Um, can only find this. Looks like a diamond earring. Oh. Doesn't seem like it should be down here. No, it is not like most servants to have uh, diamonds. Well, keep an eye on it or it might disappear into Mr. Beckwith's pockets. Mm. I do not know what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't you? Uh, is this uh, earring just thieved by a servant or is this perhaps belonging to someone? I guess I could do an energy read to figure out more. Yeah. Find out more information about it. Okay, so you're trying to like see what feeling you get off of it. Yeah, because it either will have um, like there's different types of energies, so it'll either be a negative energy, which would tell me that it would be stolen, mm -hmm. or positive, which means that it has a lot of the care to it. Okay. Okay. So uh, make your empathy roll. I got a nine. I got. Eight. What? Is there another? What? Oh, another? I didn't see the three. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> Eleven. From my angle, it was just three dice. Okay, so as you're holding this dying, or this die, this earring, earring die, <laughs> this earring, you concentrate and try to close out all the other feelings of people that you're sensing in the room and just focus in on this earring. And you do notice that there seems to be a negative energy surrounding it. There's, there's a positive one as well, that, that it seems to be an object that was used a lot, that was loved, but that maybe it is not in its correct place. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how to describe it, but it doesn't seem like it should be down here. Hmm. So it's been... Hmm. Perhaps, Ellie, you could use your powers to determine to whom it belongs. 
That's a good idea. Let's do it. Okay. So you're asking your spirit guide who the earring belongs to. I got an eight. Got an eight. Eight. Okay, so we'll reroll. I got a seven. seven. Oh, I got Ooh. a 10, 12. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you pull out your paper and you begin <laughs> to write and focus. And then all of a sudden it starts to uh, write letters and you write out L O R R A I N E. Lorraine. This is the lady of the house's earring. Mm -hmm. It is strange that it would be down here. This room does not even look occupied. Yes, well, after we f f find whatever it is we are looking for here, she's probably a good one to talk to after all. She probably knows where in this rather large house a mirror could be found. Does this, um, does this room look like it's being currently used or just like a... It doesn't necessarily seem to be used, no. Mm. We still have not successfully determined what room belongs to Adriana. Well, I assume it was somewhere in here. Yeah. Could I ask if there are any mirrors in the house at all? Ask in my spirit guide. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that question out of the way. Okay. I got seven acing. Oh. oh. oh what did you guess? Thirteen. Oh, that's really good. Oh, oh come on. on. That's really good. Nineteen now. No, keep We're on going. Gonna keep gonna on going. Out. Out. <laughs> Never <laughs> mind. Do you do that in any, any other game? <laughs> no, he does. It's the chair. <laughs> I think it's. Do you use these specific dice? No, he does not. He uses other it's dice. Gotta be it's their friggin' wedding dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's our, it's it our wedding dice. them to succeed. That's, there's, cheating, right? Mm, yes, yeah. cheating. How is that cheating? <laughs> uh, how's it cheating? Everyone watching knows. <laughs> With all your good vibes and stuff. <laughs> I don't do it. Rosaline, though. I don't ace that much. You use different dice as Rosaline. I, I do. That's true. That's what, it's the dice. That's true. <laughs> I <laughs> guess. I can use different dice. I have others. Clip. Anyway. Uh, okay. So Sorry, wait. Well, what was the total on that? Yeah. It was an effective. Uh, it was like 20-something. Okay. Five, 24. Uh, 24. Uh, Too many to count. <laughs> what do we search the rest of the servants' quarters and attempt to find something that speaks to us? Yeah. I can find Adriana's room still, right? Or are we in here? Adriana's room. You're no, not sure. Do not know. Well, all we can do is look around and see if anything strikes our fancy. If this force is somehow attached to things that are in here, perhaps it will react when we get near, or, or perhaps it has preserved it over the years. It's <laughs> only. <laughs> Says Horace. <laughs> kind of burped through the pipe there. <laughs> yeah. Amplified it a little bit. <laughs> Would you be able to sense if there's a child's energy or anything like that coming? I don't know. This I know Adrian's around. But so one thing you're about thinking about, Adrian, yeah, too, is that it's been about 30 years since Adriana yeah. was living here in the house, so things just might have changed. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, uh, Jordan, can we get some more? <laughs> yeah, not unless they're right next to me. Hmm? Uh, Not in the thoroughbred well, next to me. Perhaps I could at least oh. see if I could locate a mirror in the house. That'd be awesome. Oh, that's, that's not really the lingo of the 20s. That yeah. would Ooh. be. Stare into the crystal yes. ball. While I'm doing it, I'll say, Did you get lucky with the cook, perchance? <laughs> Wait, you're asking the crystal ball uh, that? No. I was, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I was looking like, at the crystal ball. I mean, that phrasing is unusual, but, but yeah, I guess why you guys? Nikki and the cook, I told you. We'll see you guys room What? Right. <laughs> an item. What okay. gossip? It's so sweet. <laughs> it's so sweet. So, I told her I wouldn't Did you acquire what? some blood? You're <laughs> <laughs> going to need to get it eventually. Eventually. Well, maybe when the time comes, you know, we'll cross that bridge we come to, but she's so happy. It does need to be willing blood, so perhaps yeah. broaching the subject ahead of time. I okay. have to agree with... Would you potentially want to cut yourself? <laughs> Lean on some stuff? Well, I don't know a better way to phrase it, but we do need to get willing blood from a pair of lovers. I do think that they will be ha have thank to... You. Thank you. Um, it's nice to have good help. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jordan. 
I do believe it will have to be. <laughs> Thank you. This couple. Thank you so much. Rather than the the owners of the the house. <laughs> what? I can't. <laughs> what? I'm drooling on myself. Don't worry oh, about okay. it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Just like bit half of it. Out they, of I've been there. Basically, the, the the servants are the ones that are shaken up, and I feel like are more likely to care about the well-being of Aiden rather than the parents so being yeah. influenced negatively. And yes. Yeah. And hopefully they yeah. will. They'll be willing to aid us. If not, we must secure blood by some other means. Otherwise, we need two willing lovers. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, <laughs> this is very impropriety. <laughs> this is impropriety. Uh, we shall burn that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> so the Germans cannot follow us. So, right. are you... Yes, yes okay. I'm, I'm looking in, in the ball to see if I can... Okay. So you're looking in the crystal ball. Yeah. I mean, to see I'm if you can see job. where... Yeah. Uh, what are you looking for exactly again? To see if we can, I can game. locate well, a room. Here's the thing! They, you're not going to find have... it. You know why? <laughs> Locate a room where the oh, mirror is. 11. 12. Just 12. Well, I have 13. <gasps> oh. Okay. Math. So you actually <laughs> uh, get this. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is it the same? It's the same vision you saw before, which makes you think that there's probably one down here. It appears that. The only place that I'm aware of that contains a mirror is somewhere in this wing, in the servants' quarters. So I say we look here and then proceed uh, into the other servants' quarter rooms until we find a mirror, uh, being careful not to be eaten by the rug. <laughs> Very well. well. That's good advice. <laughs> I believe perhaps the best way to go about this segment of our investigation is simply to do it the old-fashioned way and put... Uh, Nose to the ground and search the area for any sort of mirrors or remnants of those who have been here before. I tend to search with my hands, but I suppose if you want to use your nose, that's it's an expression, Beckwith. Gentlemen, if we could you. focus. Yeah. You really right. are the crack ship at this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll try to use my thief to snoop around the room. Okay, so you're snooping around to, this to room? To thief around the room. Mm-hmm. Don't want to horn in on anyone <laughs> snooping. Thief around the room. <laughs> whoa, whoa, only one person snoops in this group. I got a six. Okay, I got a nine, 13. Okay, so you're looking about this room, mm-hmm. and uh, is there anywhere in particular you're looking? I mean, I'll check the, the like, whatever drawers, the nightstand. Okay, nightstand, so you, um, Open the nightstand and you look in, and there's there's not much in there, but you do notice a like a duster, like a feather duster, mm-hmm. in there. Uh, but the rest of it just looks fairly unused beyond that. But you do find that. There is a this feather duster. <laughs> um. I'll snoop again. Okay. So are you snooping in here? Or are you going to a different room? I feel like there's got to be something else in here. In this okay. Room. All right. So I got a six. You already aced and got more than that. Uh, okay, so is there a particular place you're looking in here? Uh, the bed. Okay, the bed. So uh, you kind of pull the sheets back and you look, and it, it, it looks like this bed hasn't been used for a while. You look under the bed, and you don't really see anything but dust here. And as you're looking at all this, you realize you're pretty sure that there's not much else to be found in this room. Okay. Megan wants us to move on. Let's go to Let's a different do the room. next one. Well, there's nothing here, and we cannot use this feather duster. I suppose it's <laughs> most wise. Onward! I like consen- consider throwing it, but then I just put it back. Say, hey, George, sniff around the room, the next room. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. so I guess we're gonna peek outside first. You don't know what's going on with You're that going... rug. I figure we set the well. Is, wait, is there another place to go in here without going back? No. We just have to go. Okay. Go room yeah. to room. All right. Stiff up a lip. <laughs> Open the door. Everything looks normal. The rug looks like it did before. Everything happened. I'm gonna test it with my foot. It was kind of... Feels like a rug. It's fine. Don't worry. We can still go in a speedy manner into the next room. 
Mm -hmm. All right, we'll jog to the next room. <laughs> so you're going to the next room. All right, so this room. Go, 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 go. <laughs> uh, this room actually looks like maybe some, like it's somebody's room. Uh, you see a, uh, an apron that is hanging in. There's like uh, some hooks on the walls. There's an apron. There's a raincoat. There's a few other things like that in this room. And it's, it's not hard to tell. <laughs> it clearly looks like it's the cook's room. Oh. A woman who is in something of a romantic entanglement is likely to have a mirror around there. Maybe. Somewhere. For their own personal vanity reasons. Yeah. That is the reason why most people have a mirror. Yes. <laughs> I will. That's what I've said. <laughs> what do we see in the room? Um, so this room is, looks very much like the other one, except it just looks more lived in. So there, again, there's just a little twin bed that's set against the wall. There's a dresser. There's no hooks on the wall that have a few things hanging in it. You can tell that there's a, a, a very small closet. Um, there's a nightstand. And then it looks like maybe there's a few books and just some knickknacks, personal knickknacks about the room. Um, I'll snoop in the nightstand. The nightstand? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, I got four. You've got way more than that, including an ace. Uh, so you go over to the nightstand and you open it and you see there are a bunch of, like, there's a, a, a a like notebook in here. It looks like there's a few recipe cards, and you also see a few like letters that have that have like a nice little bow tied around them that are in the nightstand. And that's what you find here. Can I take the letters out to read? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you pull the letters out, and you can see they are love letters, and they are from Nicholas, and they're just very, you know, they're just like little notes that it seems like maybe they pass to one another about the house, and it just says things like, "You looked really nice today." I thought that uh, uh, even though you'd been in the kitchen all day, your hair was a little less frizzy than normal. <laughs> oh, he's such a romantic. I thought he was so grumpy, but he's so sweet. Compliment the woman's well, hair. Yes, that always works. With these letters, as much as it does not seem like <laughs> the nicest way of going about things, perhaps we could willingly get blood from them if we uh, threaten to expose their affair, if they are not willing to help us otherwise. Sir. I'm simply being practical. Understood. Huh. Perhaps she hides a mirror somewhere else. I'm gonna thief my way through uh, uh, her chest of drawers. Okay. Section. Okay. Uh, nine. Uh, seven. Seven. Okay. So you pull open the drawers, mm -hmm. and you see underwear, stockings, all kinds you of things such as that. Perfect. <laughs> you do not Going see. Going through a lady's drawers. Okay. I Any uh, mirrors? Sis, I think perhaps. Uh, one of you two should look through this drawer. It would be most improper for Vano to venture farther <laughs> into a woman's undergarments. I feel like you've never said that before in your life. Under <laughs> undergarments? <laughs> um, or is I, the whole phrase? The whole, the whole <laughs> phrase. Can I snoop it again? In the drawer? Hmm? Sure. <laughs> or we have that and we have the closet now. Mm -hmm. That's what's left. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to, to the closet then. Okay. Do I still use three dice? Uh, yeah, for Snoop. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got five. You aced. Much more than five. Much more than five. Uh, so you open the closet, and it's pretty standard. It's got clothes and shoes and things like that. And you look through here, and you do not see any mirrors in here, which actually continues to strike you all as very odd, because you would expect to have found a mirror in this room. Mm -hmm. And that seems very unusual. Well, Suggests that we perhaps the simple of existence of a mirror can be determined through my art, yeah, or my science, as I refer to it. Okay, so you're going to use the pendulum <laughs> to ask. Just ask: Is there a mirror in the room? In the room. Okay. Yes. All right. So roll your die for pendulum. I was just going to hold my pendulum. <laughs> you, can, you can do that. Choose what that tells you. Okay, let me roll. Is there a mirror in here? Uh, oh, I got yeah, eight. Yeah, You aced whole twice. fuck ton. Yeah, you got a whole lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine. Mm, ten, eleven. <laughs> Seventeen. You super know whether. Twenty. <laughs> Twenty-six. <laughs> or not, there's a mirror in here. So you hold your pendulum up and you wait for it to still. And then you notice that it starts to move back and forth, which you know means no. Well, this is a fruitless journey. Hmm. I'll go to the next room. <laughs> Are you ready to brave the carpet again? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <clears throat> 
All right, so you continue on to the next room. Uh, and as you open... We, 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 all, we all jog across the carpet. <laughs> okay, go, go, go! Uh, and as you go into this room, uh, I imagine you all kind of walk in backwards as you were wont to do in this house uh, because you're avoiding the rug, and you so happen to bump right into the maid. The maid. Oh! Um, what is it all of you are, are doing in here? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, that's all right. Uh, I mean, uh, but you, you are in my room, which it seems uh, a bit, I mean, is there something I, did well, you need some help? You didn't have to come all the way down madam, here. Madam, Vano and I have, have disheveled our mustaches. <laughs> and oh. would like somewhere that we could look upon our mustaches and determine how to reshovel them, as it were. Um, well, a, a reflective device. Oh, oh, you're looking for a mirror. That's yes, what you, yeah, 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 that, that's what it's called. <laughs> oh, there, there aren't any in the house. They, they, they keep um, breaking. Uh, well, surely. Breaking? Yes, every time we've tried to um, put a mirror in somewhere, well, actually, whenever we moved here, we noticed there weren't, weren't any, and we tried to put some in, and then they would break, and we haven't had a chance to, to replace all of them yet. But I don't know if it's, if it was Aiden, I, I don't know, they just all, Keep breaking, That's so there aren't any left. Quite odd. Is there? Oh. But uh, I'm sure that you could find something else. Something else that's um, reflective. You, you guys kind of notice as she's saying this that she seems a little nervous. No. There has to be a mirror somewhere in this house. Surely I, I a woman of your <laughs> kept features. <laughs> well, I, but no, I'm just, I, I just Has use... A, a personal vanity, vanity kit of some sort. I, I would hate to impose, but my mustache is ever so unkempt. <laughs> well, I, um, I, I just use uh, the, those trays, those reflective trays about the house that I use sometimes mm. to perhaps fix some, my hair. Perhaps some trays and some polish would do just as good for... Keeping my mustache <laughs> well kept. Yes, but perhaps she... I could speak to you in the hall for just a moment, uh, Lady oh, Genevieve. Well, uh, I mean, if you insist. Yes, oh, no. Oh, no. We've already found lovers. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh, with the... Nothing, nothing. Ten my mustache is making me say strange things. <laughs> I will. So, I'll, so all over the I'll place. I'll open the door for her and guide her and then turn to us the group and go. <laughs> okay. Did you just okay. wink with both eyes? <laughs> <laughs> He's not particularly well coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> what is there something wrong with your eyes? Oh, uh, it's uh, dust in, in them. Uh, <coughs> oh, it is dusty here. Yeah, so, sorry, I tried to do my job as well as no, I can. No, 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 you're doing <laughs> quite. Oh, insulting the lady, right? Off the good, bat. good job. I'll close the door behind behind us so we can speak. <laughs> okay. Little, um, yeah, just just question her about the history of the house. The history of the house. Okay, yeah. is there a specific question you're asking? Uh, if if she knows anything about uh, a, another young uh, servant girl that used to live in this wing. Oh, um, not really. I don't know much about uh, anyone who's lived here before, except for uh, Mr. Crane, of course, he, he lived here. But I don't know much else. I'm just here to work for as long as I have to, I suppose. Oh, but you do uh, such a great job at it. Well, I appreciate that. It's, I do my best. It's not a lot of fun, though, this job. <laughs> Just trying to stall for time so that they can search a room while I'm out here. <laughs> oh, we, we all we all thought you were trying to hook up with her. They trying to get answers out of her. Oh yeah, can I ahead snoop while you guys are out uh -huh. there? Yeah, oh. you can snoop. Okay. So what is this? You're not going for any Madwanky Dray? <laughs> This room is, is very Plan B. Plan B. similar to the other rooms that you've been in. Again, it looks it looks lived in. It has the bed, has a dresser, mm -hmm. has a nightstand, has a closet, um, and this one, of course, has more frilly things than the other one. She she you can see that on the nightstand she has some makeup and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there a particular place you want to look can here? I see that um, I think if you if you're hiding something, it'd be more like in the the dresser, like with the okay. underwear. All right. So you're looking in the dresser. I. Based 11. on one of them. Uh, so that's seven, eight, nine. You got an eleven. Yeah, okay. close, Ooh. close. Nice. So you go over to 
uh, the dresser, and uh, similar to the cook's dresser, there's there's underwear, under things, stockings, things like that. But you do actually, your, your hand hits something harder, mm -hmm. and you notice there's just like this small bag that's kind of lumpy. It's not very big, um, but it's kind of hidden to the back of the dresser. It's not normally an underwear drawer. Pull it out. So you pull it out, and uh, and you notice that there is a diamond necklace, and uh, you also happen to notice there's another diamond earring in there. Just one. Looks very similar to the other one that you found. And there's also a jeweled bracelet. Hmm. Well, it's not what we were looking for, but tells us a bit more about the maid. Yeah. Wait. Is it the maid's jeweled bracelet? <laughs> Well, looking at it, it looks very uh, expensive. Not yeah. something oh. that you would expect a maid to have. It could be hers, you don't know. Just one earring? We have mm -hmm. already noticed that this maid, so she's out, right? She left the room, she's with she's, Vana. Yeah, she's with Vana. Room. Well, Vana and I early encountered this maid who seemed to be absconding with various items around the thing. And I now believe that with this and the, the jewel we have found in the other room, that she may in fact be, um, Something of a thief, as it were. Mm. Well, it's strange that there's just a single earring here, and there's a single earring in the other room. Yeah, that is weird. But I don't know what to think of it. I don't know either. Maybe I can ask if there's a mirror in here. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So I got a six. I've got, uh, can I add? Eight plus three, 11. Okay, so you're asking if there's a mirror in this, this room. room. Okay, so uh, you start to write and just kind of draw circles, and then you a word starts to appear on this page, and and it actually seems to take a little longer than normal, uh, and the the word is a bit shaky, and you actually get maybe written on the page, and it strikes mm. you as odd because it it almost felt confused. Maybe. I mean, there's something that's uh, similar to a mirror, but it's not a mirror. Or maybe it's between rooms? Like maybe it's stuck in a wall? Can I see for a false wall? Mm-hmm. Mm, seven, I aced. Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't like eight. Eight. Two. your dice. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 16. Wait, you got a uh, six, so you got to re-roll one. Oh, did oh, yeah. I? Oh, yeah. well, I don't remember what the other two were. Oh. Just roll again, then. Okay, I'm sorry. Why is that face? I'm so disappointed. <laughs> You're so close. I know, I'm sorry. What did you have? 16. Yes. Just roll higher than a 16, no problem. No, I could have maybe got it. Uh, okay. Time. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so you go around and you knock on the wall in different places and you push on things. You don't really notice anything. Maybe. I want to ask if this jewelry, if she stole it, from the lady of the house. Okay. All right, so you're asking. Yes. If she stole this jewel. Purloined. The house. Are they, in fact, purloined jewels of some sort? I got a five. You I got greatly more than a five. More, and you ace. Okay, so you hold up your pendulum and you wait for it to still, and you ask the question, and you notice that it starts to circle, which you know means yes. Hmm. Just as hmm. I suspected. Maybe. Uh. She's well, um, always dull. We know that Can she I... is a woman of loose morals when it comes to that which is owned by her mistress. Hmm. But I do not know how this is relevant to our investigations. Can I roll obscure knowledge, see if I can figure out if there would be a, like, a, if I know of like any like classic way of hiding something, if there's like a safe or something like that in rooms like this. Yeah. Or like a little, or like a little cubby hole or where that one, can I, which, uh, obscure knowledge, see if I can see if there's some place. Sure. Something might be hidden. It's not gonna. I got uh, six. Five. Five. Yeah. Um, so you try to think of something and you know that you've read something about that before, but you just can't remember it. You're so close, but you just can't think of it. I wish there was a place where I could consult something and get answers instantly. <laughs> if only. If only. So as you guys continue to look, the mage is like, <sighs> so is there anything else you wanted to ask me or? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, in my line of work, 
it sometimes becomes necessary to have a, a very attractive assistant. Oh. And uh, Vano is in great need of one. Oh, uh, um, well, how well does it pay? <laughs> the pay is substantial. Well, um, if, if, you, if you're looking for someone, um, I, I mean, I don't, I, are, you, are you asking me? Oh, perhaps if you have the uh, skills required. Oh, what, what sort of skills would I need? Oh, uh, a dexterity of hand, uh, quickness of wit, sparkle in the eye. Oh, well, I, I think I, I, I probably have all of those things. I think perhaps you do. Really? Yes. Well, that, that sounds like a wonderful job if you, if you want to have me. If I want to have you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, uh, it's so raining uh, on this show. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe above that, I'm not sure. Uh, Thank you, Happy Jacks RPG, for the rain, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I just, the only other requirement is a loyalty to Bano, you understand. Uh, magic is mysterious and secretive, and there are things which you would know that you would not divulge to anyone else. Uh, we must have a trust, you understand. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the best way Vano finds to test this is to share a truth, a secret, that you have shared with no one else. Oh. Okay. What sort of thing? Could be anything. Something you would never tell another soul. Something that costs, you see, because the art of magic costs. Okay, so I think you're going to have to try and persuade her with Casanova, I assume, here. But she's rolling with one less die because uh, what the chat unlocked. How many do you have? One. You, you so wanna, excellent. She just has two. Yeah, you could use you a, lucky, add one? a lucky shot over there. Do, do you guys pump it up, man? Pump do it. it. Oh, yeah, oh, I could yeah. just pump it. Yeah. Well, I'd say just push it. Or use the extra die. Get the, get the lucky shot. Think? Use push the lucky it real shot. Good. Yeah. Lucky shot. Yeah. Reach it! Reach! <laughs> <laughs> I could not use one of my own d6s. I have to use one of these. Sorry, these sorry, are the lucky gotta ones. Gotta be special. These are the lucky ones. Okay. All right. She got five. eight. Five. You got five. Maybe re-roll it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, go let's blow it. Let's, let's blow it, it. on it. We all want you to let's seduce the maid. <laughs> <laughs> Wee. Ah. All right. All right. Six. Six. <laughs> So yeah. close. Um, so. This is my Casanova power. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> she just says, well, I think I already told you one that I've not told anyone. I, I really don't like this job. Mm, yes, that is a great secret <laughs> <laughs> that no one could possibly guess. I know. I think that I, I do a very good job of making it seem that I like this job. It's a great actress of your time. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. Uh, perhaps I might speak with you later. Uh, the, my compatriots and I have some business to attend to. Oh. It seems that the hauntings are getting worse. Of course. Yes. Just, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be here. Great. <laughs> Great. And then I'll, uh, like, go to get the door and like sort of pretend that it's stuck and do a lot of jiggling it. It's like, oh, this door is very uh, difficult. Oh. <laughs> I can, I, can no, I, no, please, allow me. I guess I'll come open the door when I hear him knock. Okay, all right. Uh, is so everything you okay, Vaughn? Oh, yes, it just appeared that the door was stuck. Did but it? <laughs> done that before. It's quite odd. Did strange. you? Old house. All needs something else oh, from me. Thank you. No? All right. As well. always, uh, the pleasure was all Vanos. Oh, very well. Thank you. All right, well, she goes off, uh, and as she does, um, roll your snoop for me. Okay. That's good snooping. Got, yeah, I got 11. You got a... <laughs> Megan keeps on acing. 17, I believe. Uh, okay, 18, 19. Only you 19. also aced. You got That's 19? Mm -hmm. So you have, you have a, a 12. 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, 
Wait, 12, wait, I can't it's a, uh, Yeah, I hate... Oh, is that three? Is that a three or three. five? It's a three, it's a three. five, and a six. 14. We got 14. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 14, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it, you can do it. I can't you can count! Do it. You can do it, you can do it. I plunked him half in college. It was a two. Oh. 16. Yeah. So we, wait, what did I get? Did I get above that? I got a 19, didn't I? Yes. Okay, I thought I had a 16. All right. Um, and you notice nothing. You notice <laughs> nothing. Huh. We're mm-hmm. not good at this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So she goes on about her business. Ah, uh, pretty girl, much thick as a brick. All right, <laughs> but also somewhat morally compromised. As you don't well. say. Yes, we have determined that, as you and I believed was the case earlier, the woman is a thief. What makes you say that? This. Uh-huh. But what? I hold up the, uh, <laughs> the uh, jewelry. <laughs> this is so the aggressively yes. furnished. <laughs> well, that matches the uh, the jewel we found at the end of the hallway. Indeed. With they have been purloined. With the duster, and she's a maid. Indeed, it's one plus one. Yes, Two. no, no, yeah. yes, she stole them. <laughs> That's what I am saying. <laughs> That's what I am saying. <laughs> so we are, we are on the same page. Yes. I don't know why this is such like such an aggressive exchange. <laughs> <laughs> but no mirror. No, certainly no. Maybe, maybe, which maybe means it's in a wall or nearby. I don't know if I can. Well, perhaps something that is reflective like a mirror. But that will not be helpful because after we trap the uh, evil soul inside, we must smash. Shatter. Cannot, uh, yes. cannot shatter a polished tray. Could I go into the next room and ask if there's a mirror in there? Sure. Or maybe if it says maybe again, uh, we'll confirm. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. It has to shatter. 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 Ugh. Okay, seven. Uh, eight. Ace, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Okay. So you should go to the next room. You don't notice anything, but roll your flapper. Classic. One. Mm, Flap at them. Um. Are you drunk? Uh, <laughs> yes. 19. Eight, oh, wow. I aced no. <laughs> Eight, uh, 11, 12, 13. Okay, 19. So as you come out of that room, you see the maid and she's still continuing on, but you notice that she is looking at her hand and just kind of fixing her <gasps> hair as she I goes. That anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> turns the corner. Hey, yeah. your girlfriend was checking out her hair. Checking out a do. With a handheld mirror of some sort. And we confront her. Let's go. <laughs> um, in that case, I want to follow her down the hall. Okay. Who's got the jewels? Yeah. We have the jewels, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Follow her down the hall. Okay. And when I find her, I am going to tap her on the shoulder and be like, Madam, oh, there's I- something that we need to discuss. Oh, all right. Now uh, our investigation in this house is dealing with the matters that have happened de- uh, around the family, but we have uncovered something else that I believe you will find very pertinent. Oh, what was it? <clears throat> Do you recognize these? Oh, is so he show, show her the jewels? Mm-hmm. She immediately goes, um, n- no. Well, we did find I them don't. in your dresser. That's, someone must have put them there. Your lies will get you nowhere now, <laughs> young lady. Okay, so let's roll your high society against her maid. And uh, because you're showing her this and chat unlocked uh, helping you guys, she's only gonna roll Oh, good. Yay. Yay. She got a five. I got a five and a three and a four. Okay. Boom. She, she looks at you and looks at the jewels and then she just starts crying. She goes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I just, I just wanted to to have a better life, and and, and she has more jewels than she needs. And, and, yourself. But I'll lose my job if I do. We are not here out. to turn you in. If you can help us in our greater investigation, now, I've seen the way you keep yourself together, and I do not believe it was done through the the somewhat cloudy reflections. Is this of a tray? Is this about your mustache still? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. I guess there's no longer a need to keep up the mustache ruse. Though I did find it a rather clever one when I came up with it. <laughs> if you have a mirror, it is very important to our investigation that you give it to us. 
No, I, 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 I do have this mirror, but it's, it's the ladies of the, ho of the house, and I, I, I... We will not reveal it to her, but we need it. So she pulls out a, it's a, it's a, just a handheld mirror, and it's got a bunch of jewels on the back. Mm -hmm. Right, but you, you promise you won't tell her that, that I took it. I promise. my job. Oh. I promise okay. that if you don't give it to us, we will tell her about these. <laughs> oh, right, all right, I, I don't understand why you need a mirror, but you can have the mirror. I, it, it, yes, well, such things are not for you to understand. <laughs> Is that all you needed from me? For the time being. All right, and she kind of puts her head down and goes <laughs> off about wow. her business. <laughs> well, yes. fine, I'll. Just very disappointed. <laughs> Unless it shows how our moral failings open us up to <clears throat> weaknesses in various other areas of our life. Uh huh. So I'm <laughs> I guess I'll hold on to the, the mirror. So we well, got a mirror. Right. We have a mirror, but we still need the blood of lovers. Yes. What? I don't know. I don't understand why you didn't already ask them for that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was a bit more complicated than that. What was? What yes, we must require? use the blood of of lovers. Uh, consecrate a mirror with it, uh, get the foul half-demon to turn the back into its human form, show it itself in the mirror, it will get trapped in the mirror, and then we smash it. And hopefully, we do not die. <laughs> because Vano does not want to die. <laughs> oh yes, you've made that abundantly clear, Vano. <laughs> there are better things to we do. We have to get the Alophine to show itself, and this could theoretically be achieved in any number of ways, but the prevailing idea is that an appeal must be made to its human desires and needs. Well, I do have a way with people. <laughs> Vano, we've all seen your people skills. Um, Ellie, the message we got before was toys, and that was something we were not able to figure out. But that might have been from Caroline yeah. instead. That is true. Mm. Uh, we still I must... Wonder... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Go no, ahead. I was saying I wonder if I should ask again, but I'm afraid to... Uh, Simply from, the, simply from the context of journals and other things like that, it may be that all of the, this aloe demon... Was that in the, or whatever the it was. spirited form, which is more difficult to get rid of? Hmm? Get it to reveal itself. Yes, that's when we <clears> must bring <throat> it so back to its human. There's only yes. one rumored way to defeat a Cambian spirit, but it is not substantiated. The mirror must be consecrated with the blood of two lovers, freely okay. given. If the Cambian or aloe fiend is in its demon state, it must be forced to reverse to revert and show itself. This could theoretically be achieved in a number of ways. The failing idea is that an appeal must be made to its human desires well, Let's not needs. depend on Vanos. Well, it seems that what a child wanted very much in life was to be appreciated as the child of the lady of the house, to be important. Now, I don't know if that's what it continues to want, but perhaps even just acknowledgement of its existence and status would somewhat go in that correct direction. That is very sensitive of you, Horace. Yes. yes, well, I was once a married man myself. I have some insights into the thoughts of women. This, this is the so ghost of a small child. Yes, well, <laughs> really, it's all a broad area. <laughs> broad area. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Yes, but <laughs> with their women thoughts. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, the uterus makes them think in a particular way. <laughs> <laughs> At all times. That is that is all well and good, but uh, we still need yes. blood. Dr. Freud is calling it hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> <laughs> It hurts so much. Uh. Uh. <clears throat> well, uh, as you guys are having this conversation, there's some windows that are kind of high windows as this part of the house is a bit lower. And you just notice that a, a, a raven has landed on it and just seems to be looking in the window just while you all are talking. Mm. As you continue to talk, another one uh, lands on the window. Mm. And you just continue, the rest of you kind of start to notice. It doesn't necessarily stand out to you until there seem to be ravens on all the windows, just filling them, they're just looking at you. Does huh. that seem normal? Hmm. Well, you know, birds like windows, I believe. Yes. And as you <laughs> say that, there's another window that's, that's further right. off, and a bird smashes into oh. it very loudly. Oh. Well, that bird certainly does not like that window anymore. <laughs> and then all the birds fly away after that happens. Ah, well. Well. Perhaps the windows were cleaned too carefully. 
Well, uh, I believe we should still be strong to procure <laughs> that blood. I don't, I don't know why we're... I mean, who, who, we... who will do this? They must volunteer it. We can't just take it from them. Well. But I would say Ellie has the uh, best uh, social skills and convincing. Well, we have to convince Nikki too. <clears throat> Nikki yes. the butler. Perhaps you should talk to him, unless he likes magic. I find that a, a firm word from one of authority tends to work well with butler types. Oh, Horace, I think we're going to try and leave it up to Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you all want to go talk to the butler, or do you want to go back to the cook? Um, I think we should talk to the... Mm. Maybe if we can convince the butler. Well, yeah, but well, then we have to let to the butler me. know. Yeah, I yeah. feel like we should talk to the cook. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna need some help and some collaboration here because asking her to, hey, you mind putting some of your blood on this mirror? <laughs> I'm actually not sure what to say. I mean, I'm, I could talk to her, but I, maybe we can do a little bit of brainstorming? What if we could talk to um, both of them as a, as a couple and just... Ask for their blood together. <laughs> Combo blood of sorts. <laughs> Perhaps just, just walk up to them and say, hello, <laughs> I realize the two of you are engaged in sexual intercourse frequently. May we have some blood on this mirror? Thank in, you. In 1922, it's gonna, I mean, we're, it's the modern age, but I feel like it's a little. Now the, people um, like this tend to, to have something of a barbaric image of what it is we do. Yes. They so we see. reinforce that by asking for their blood? <laughs> exactly. Now, if, if we are to tell them that a small sample of blood from residents of the house, those who have been affected, perhaps, we can tell if they are influenced by the spirits. Freely as given. it were. It would be freely given. They're under false pretenses. Yes, but it didn't say anything about false pretenses. No, it did not. Aha! Horace, I agree with you for once. <laughs> <laughs> I must I appreciate mean. that. <laughs> Are they engaged? Don't, is this, do they do a blood test to get married? Is this some horrible thing I'm bringing no. up that they used no, to no. do? No, no. None of this makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. We are simply saying that by analyzing their blood, we can tell if they are, in fact, targets of the specter, or if they have been negatively influenced. Oh. Mm. Willingly, oh. they will give us a small sample which we could analyze, but which, in truth, we shall use to Consecrate deal the with to consecrate the mirror and drive out. All right. That is actually a good that plan. That I can work with. I sometimes have them. I am a man of learning, after all. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk the. I'll talk to the cook and she. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 We got a story. Okay. okay. So you're gonna go talk to the cook? Yeah. All right. We'll take the mirror because we'll need to blood on. I grabbed it. Oh, oh. wait. Oh, it's over here. Oh yeah. yeah. So, okay. I guess, suppose we will just wait outside the kitchen. <laughs> Like, I'll lean it against the door if I open it all three years. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm? Is it working? <laughs> Blood? <Okay. laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm still working on this stew. You know how it goes. <laughs> it smells good. I make, I don't make stew. I don't make stew. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lied to you like that. Oh, um, that's right. That's why it's so magical what you do. I can't do that. You know what I mean? Well, it would probably be very helpful for you to learn to cook if you ever want to have a husband someday. Oh. <laughs> it is 1922 after all. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten progressive yet. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can. That's a whole can of worms. I'm just going to leave it right there. But beyond that, uh, you know, you know what we do, what I do for a living. Or, well, not for a living, but you know, for fun. We've been searching the house and working on things. You know, it's been very sick. Yes, this house has been very weird. And, and that is one thing that Nicholas and I completely disagree on. He thinks that it's all in everyone's head, but I've seen strange things here. And I, for one, am very glad you're here. Thank you. And, I'm so, I'm, and there's, there's actually something we want to do to protect you. Uh, and, oh, uh, me? You're, you think you're, I need protection? Well, oh, everyone in the house, we want to. Uh, it's kind of strange to ask, and but it might require a little adventure, you know. Oh, oh, well, um, I don't get much adventure in here, so I'm all for it. But we need, this is going to sound weird, we need just a little drop of your blood. Just a drop, oh, not a lot. Of my blood? And oh. some of the other servants, too, like, say, say the butler. Oh. Ones. 
It would be harder to convince him. He, he might likes be. his blood very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to be all macabre and everything, but it's we need to use it and ultimate. We need to make sure that you're not a target and that you're okay. I, I don't want to scare you with any of these things, but oh. but it's oh. also for the safety of everyone in this house that we get your blood. Oh, well, yes, of course. Oh, um, it's so it's, wonderful. I, I don't mind. I don't know about um, Nicholas. He might be a bit harder, but you, um, I, I could try and talk to him. <gasps> I suppose. Would you? I bet he listens to you more than anyone else. He might. He might. Sometimes I can be quite pers persuasive. <laughs> so she um, she says, well, do I just get a, a knife or is there some what, specific way? Just whatever's comfortable for you. I bet, like, if you have a knife or a needle or anything. I don't know if I have a needle or anything like that. And just a draw. Okay. Somewhere to store it. Do we have? I think I'll put it on the mirror, maybe. Mm -hmm. Drop just it right put it directly on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where we're going to put it. Is it like a little clasp mirror? Um, I, I, it's more of just like a, it's just a jeweled mirror, so it's jeweled on one side and it's just like a little handheld so mirror, so it's like a class that's just, yeah. Well, I wonder <laughs> if I showed her the mirror, because that's the, you just hold it. That's, oh yeah, just I didn't want to recognize it as, it'll even, probably be even, fine. Even it's if probably, so, yeah. Yeah. It's yours. we'll find mm -hmm. out. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she'll find, she'll just grab like a small paring knife okay. and she just kind of pricks her finger. <gasps> right. But this is, there. This Kind of, uh, it's weird, but kind of exciting. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what happens with that. Oh, yeah, that oh. I'll let you know. Do you think we could talk to, uh, to, to, to oh, the um, gentleman? Uh, yes, um, I, I can, I'll ring for him. So she pulls a bell. Uh, this is the best. <laughs> and waits for him to come down. He eventually comes down. And when he sees that you're in there, he goes, oh, well, yes, so uh, was there something that you needed or, um, and he kind of looks at the cook, whose uh, name is Wilma, yes, uh, or uh, Miss, Miss uh, Marx, and says something that either one of you needed. Well. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of stands there, <laughs> and she looks a little shy. Uh, and as you start to talk, she says, well, um, I know that um, Mr. Uh, um, McFarland, uh, um, and he kind of nods at her, and they, you know, it's, it's almost like too presentational. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just kind of letting him. <laughs> but she says, I, I know that um, you don't think much of what um, Miss Baker here and the rest of uh, her, the, her associates are doing, but um, they are trying to protect everyone in this house. And because of that, they need some of your blood. And he kind of looks at her for a second and says, uh, excuse me, what? You, you need my blood to protect people in this house. Do we hear this going on? Mm -hmm. I turn and I go, Vano, it's not working. You're a charlatan. How would you trick a man into giving you his blood? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm insulted by the insinuation. But it's true. Come on. We don't have no time for well, such games. Let Miss Baker have her way with him. And if that does not work, I will enter the picture. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 I just, I don't fully, what is it that you would do with my blood? I know, I know you don't entirely believe in all of this and it's okay, but we need just a drop, just to make sure that we can protect you. Cause we're worried about the energy in this house. I explained it to the lovely, lovely Wilma. Oh, well, and I know you would probably care about the family in this house and the people who work in this house. Like well, Wilma. Oh, uh, I people, mean, I, you know, care about Miss Marks here as much as I do any of the servants of the house. Want to protect her, make sure she, does, sure she doesn't come to any harm, well, right? Yes, of course, I, that's what I want to do. And Wilma says, well, and I, I gave some of my blood. And he kind of looks at her like, oh, um, well, fine. If this is something that uh, has to be done, I think it's ridiculous. I will tell you that, Miss Baker, but uh, I will I will do it. So here is my hand. I don't know what it is you need to do. And he kind of looks at me. <laughs> I just like, do like this small. Cut He's like, I pull out my <laughs> stiletto knife. <laughs> yeah, and just like a pick. And he, he kind of like flinches yes, and, and then, then put it on mm -hmm. me. And I, Thank you so much, both of you. This is, you won't regret it one bit. Well, I hope not. I still hope that you won't pulling the legs of the, 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 the master and his, his wife in this house, because that I cannot stand. Well, I was always raised to know you never mess with anyone who brings you your dinner. Oh, well, that is one of them. <laughs> quite uh, smart, yes, quite. So is there anything else that you or Miss Marks uh, needed? 
Well, I think Miss Marks might have needed some help with the stew, but I don't know. But I'll see you later. The stew. All right. <laughs> so he's trying to kind of figure out how to help with stew. <laughs> and so you guys leave. And I go, okay. I'm like, you guys, I got the blood. <laughs> That's great. Very good. Very good. I thought you had to come in and snob him out. I was getting close. <laughs> or he'd charm it. <laughs> yes, I do have a way with butlers sometimes. <laughs> I've never I had an order a servant to give me blood, but I feel I could do it if I had to. <laughs> I like tuck it. I'm here. Oh, that's okay. All right. Okay. It's is, that, is that the only way out of this way is back to the kitchen? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that is. <laughs> All right, I, I guess I'll go single to open the door. File. Single file. <laughs> I'll go open the door, and then I'll, 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 jig, I'll jiggle it again, so it's like a bit. <laughs> ah, this door, it sticks. It's best to give people yeah. time to know you're coming. Yeah. Ah! Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, yes, we'll, uh, we, we'll, we'll be passing through. Well, as you guys walk in, uh, the butler kind of like jumps in and is like, yes, of course, yeah, whatever. He doesn't really seem, he seems more concerned with what you guys saw than what he's seeing. So, mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so you guys uh, go through the kitchen and. Yes. On my way out, I'll, I'll just be like, ah, thank you for all your, all your help. And I'll just, <laughs> he just kind of looks at you confused. <laughs> this new thing, winking. You should try it. It's all the rage on the continent. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps you should practice that in private, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Up close, it's amazing. <laughs> There's already a GIF of it. <laughs> yeah, I used it today. Um, all right, so you guys. Uh, leave the servants' quarters, and you're going back out. Uh, what is it you, you would like to do now? Now you have the mirror, and it is consecrated with the blood of so two we, lovers. We need to find uh, a demon girl. <laughs> yes, and get to reveal herself. How is it that we can draw the girl out? I find demon girls normally come to me. Perhaps <laughs> we can take advantage of her conflict with the, the Caroline chap. <laughs> yes. But where, where is Caroline? Well, the one who always seems to know where Caroline is, is Aiden. But it's quite right. And there you is seem to have something of a rapport with the child. I do Did indeed. Vanna was great with children. Did and we never d- decided if that was Caroline or not. It's not like well, Adriana, one or the other. she was being Perhaps mean, Perhaps it too. is both. Perhaps the little boy does not fully understand that there are multiple entities that are mm. dealing with. Sometimes he said they were nice, and sometimes they were mean. Mm. That's true. Mm. And it has become clear that one of them wants the child eliminated. Yes, and that does not sound like Caroline, as far as we know. No. To mm. Aiden, then. Yep. Indeed. Okay, so you're going to go up to Aiden's room? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you go upstairs to his room, and he's in there, and he's doing what he usually is doing. He's, he's sitting in his bed, and he's just sort of playing with some of his toys. Ah, young master Aiden. Oh, Mr. Vano, are you here to show me some more tricks? Mm, yes, perhaps, uh, but Vano requires a large audience for a trick so fantastic as the one he's about to show you. Oh, okay, so does that mean we have to wait for people to show up? Yes, it must be at least... Five. strong, back with. <laughs> at least five people. Uh, it is a very specific trick. Uh, three adults and two children. <laughs> it's really specific. Yeah. Well, we have four adults here. Oh, but you, you don't count. Very well. Yes, I, I cannot yes. be my own audience member. I don't know of any other. I mean, I'm the only child in the house. Ah, what about your friend? Oh, my friend! Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we'll have had independently. I don't really know how to, to get her here. I guess I could try and, and um, I don't know her name though. Friend, there's a really cool magic trick that you want to see, probably. Oh, it's very much up to you to let us know if they show up. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> well, I mean, she just seems to, to come sometimes. Oh, you know what she really likes, though, are, are my blocks. And they're on the floor. Um, and so he kind of reaches and kind of goes, <coughs> as he reaches over to grab them. Then he pulls the blocks. He's like, friend, um, I've got the blocks. You can come play with them. And then he kind of waits for a little bit. And then um, you... He, he looks out at the door, 
And then all of a sudden, what you actually see is, you, well, before you see, you hear this weird metallic footsteps. And uh, it gets closer and closer and louder and louder. And you see coming around the doorway, the suit of armor that is here in the library. Oh. Was that the magic trick you were going to do? And this suit Not of armor. a rather good trick, Varno. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Aiden kind of looks at it, he's like, oh, are you doing that? Is that you? And as he says that, the suit of armor comes in and it pulls its sword and it points it right at you and it picks it up to swing and we are moving into a combat. Where, what room are we in? You are in the, the child's room. bedroom. So what do we have that we could oh, we, use? We got blocks. Uh, yep, there's mm-hmm. blocks, there's chair, Some there's candy curtains. wrappers underneath the bed. Yes. So, this is attacking you right now, but as you guys start to try to look around the room, you are standing pretty close to the window and all of a sudden the curtains wrap around you and they they start trying to suffocate you. Oh no. Uh, And then there are some books over on the shelf and they- Books. (laughs) (laughs) Not again. They they, they shoot into the room and they start to fly at you and then you notice- But they're fiction. (laughs) (laughs) They very clearly are fiction. Uh, You notice this this sense of fear. It's incredibly strong, and you can tell it seems like it is trying to get you to leave. All right, so this is happening all at once. So let's go around. It started here with you. This suit of armor is attacking you. So what would you like to do? I'm going to flap it and do the latest dance move. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to see if I can get behind the suit of armor by dodging it. Okay, you want to try to dodge it. So Mm -hmm. it's swinging at you, and you're trying to dodge. All right. Oh. Good lord, jeez. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, no. seven, eight, nine. You're all ready. <laughs> no? You're good. Okay, all right, so as you try to dodge Got out 13. of the way, the uh, you, you go off this way, and instead of the blade actually hitting you, you get hit by the hilt, and it knocks you over to the side. And, and it kind of goes flying, but then it picks up the sword, and it's ready to go again. So let's okay. switch to you. So the curtain has completely wrapped around you. Yep. I've been in these situations before, uh, <laughs> when I have thieved my way into houses, and I have gone down chimneys and gotten stuck. Okay. Just requires a certain agility to slink out of it. Okay. All right. So you're trying to slink out of this as using thief. Right. Okay. And I am going to pump this, I think, by all of it. Wow. 12, 13, 14, Then you just 15, pass 15, out. 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm good for. Here. So okay. I have 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay. Do I just, if I use all of them and I fail or succeed, I pass out? You yeah, well, pass out, yeah. you, you, yes, you, you are. You were taken out of the battle. You were taken out of the battle. I will battle. pump it by one less than I had previously <laughs> stated. Okay. So that is five. All right. Ooh. So oh. that is 15, 16, uh, 21. 21. No, actually 22, 20, sorry. 26. 26, okay, you beat my 20. So you were, you, nice. so you were down to one in Thief, or, yeah, that's what you used. Mm-hmm. Thief, but. You uh, do manage to escape, to, to be able to push out of the curtain. You kind of fall to the ground. All right, so let's jump over to you. And the books are flying directly at you here. And St. George is very upset and barking and uh, barking at the books, trying to figure out what to do, looking to you, waiting for you to lead him. Uh, ah, the works of Fitzgerald, populist clap trap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, just kind of I can't believe this kid has Gatsby in his room. Like, I know. <laughs> like five. <laughs> so yeah, he, just, just, he has books out you there. Know. You know? Wow. He, he's got his short stories. He's got Benjamin Button. Uh, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Funny <laughs> books for, for children and who knows what. Mm-hmm. Can you use yeah. hunting uh, some? Um, yeah, I think I'll use hunting and I'll just be like, tear it up! <laughs> okay. Tear it up, St. George! So you're telling St. George to try and grab at the books. Okay, so mm-hmm. roll your hunting. And I'm gonna pump it by one. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I rolled two ones and a six. 
So I could still succeed, right? That's I eight. got 27. Cool. I'm good then. Like, this is basically doable. I mean, 10. 10. 10's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. 10. Not compared to 27. So St. George is trying to uh, grab at the books, but they keep flying away, and they're just starting to hit you, hitting you in the shoulder. Uh, in the back, one's aiming right through your head. Okay, so as all that is happening, you feel this very strong sense of fear, so you're essentially rolling to avoid running away because of it. Okay. Question? Um, yes. If I pumped hunting by one mm-hmm. and then lost, do yeah. I lose one? I was trying to figure that out. Would you lose <laughs> one I? or would you lose, you would lose two. Well, I'm, so, I'm out of it again. So we'll say that the, the uh, book knocks you in the head and you fall over. You're not unconscious, you just fall over. These combats don't go long for, uh, <laughs> for okay. a horse Duncombe. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're rolling. It's not as young as it used to be. Uh-huh. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 14, I got 15. So you start to, you, you don't get very far, but you start to head for the door because this fear is That's overwhelming 15. you. Is it 15? Yeah. Then we got the same amount. So let's roll again. Th- oh, thanks, because I totally just accepted Math. it. I can't, <laughs> yeah, I'm just not good. 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That is 14. 19. Okay, yes, that does happen. You start to head for the door. Uh, because this is becoming overwhelming for you. All right, so uh, let's go back to you. Now the uh, suit of armor has picked up the sword and is trying to aim at you again. So you can use Flapper again to try and evade. You could use your knife skill to try and fight it directly. Um, Or if there's something you want to actively do against it, you can do that as well. Okay. Um... Let's, uh, I'm gonna knife wield it to see if I can knock that sword out of its hand. Okay, I like it. So um, let's, so you pull your knife and you're basically gonna use it to try and, as it comes okay. at you to mm-hmm. kind of hit back. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. I'm gonna pump this up by two. All right, two. by two? Okay. Which means I can, no, that actually, that means I'd be out if I lose, lost. Yeah. Let's pump it up by one. Okay, and there's still one lucky shot on the table. Okay, uh, and before you do this, you actually, on the ground, you notice that um, uh, Aiden is kind of like laying back against the bed and he's kind of trying to figure out what is happening. He's pretty sure this isn't a magic trick at this point. Um, But then you look at him and all of a sudden, almost like something is superimposed on top, you see Caroline, Hmm. but still just sitting there. All right, so uh, you are rolling to try and attack. Uh, this to knock the sword away. So I might take six, that lucky seven, shot if that's cool. I think you better have. <laughs> I think you better have. <laughs> I believe I got 24. Jeez, okay. I, ooh, okay, hold on. That's a five. You ace one here. 17, 23, 23. Oh! Nice. nice. Okay, okay, so you ooh. manage to knock to the sword out, and it goes flying off uh, into the hall. All right, so we'll come back to you. So you managed to escape the curtain, but now it is shooting out at you and trying to grab your feet again. Am what I... would you like to do? You could also try to actively do something to the curtain, or you can try to get away from it again. Do I have to deal with the curtain? Can I deal with the suit of armor? Yeah, you can also deal with the suit of armor. I'd like to cross, cross the... Um cross the room to where the suit of armor is attacking Ellie, mm-hmm. and I will use some of my magician skills to do one of those flame bits of my hand to try to obscure its vision. Okay. Oh. <laughs> nice. All right, so you're trying to obscure the suit of armor's vision. Yep. All right, so uh, using magician. Yep. I'm right. gonna pump it by one. Okay. Six, six, 16. I got 18. Ah, All right, so as you do that, you realize the suit of armor has no eyes that you can see. So you assume that maybe it is not utilizing vision of any kind. Uh, Okay, so let's come back over to you. So you- I've once again been knocked out by flying literature. You're not actually knocked (laughs) out, you're there. And so um, you, after you noticed that um, 
it looks like Caroline essentially is superimposed on Aiden. You see Edwin come into the room. And again, you, you kind of do a double take at him, and it, it looks like it's not just him. It looks like you think you see Silas superimposed, and he comes in and he starts yelling. You can't hear what he's yelling. There's too much noise happening, but he's yelling at the room. Uh, so let's come back over to you. And uh, again, you have started to run and you, the fear is getting stronger. So this is you trying to see if you can avoid running away from it. So you're you operating at one less die here. Oh. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> that wins. <laughs> 13. So you continue to run out of the room. All right, so now at this point, you both are fighting this suit of armor. Uh, and it, it has lost its sword and it's trying to get through some smoke, but it is trying to come back at you and just swing whatever it has that it can swing at you. Um, and you can also do something to it if you would like. I'm gonna kick it like you do you when kick someone's it? getting fresh. All right, sounds good. <laughs> so you're going to kick out at it With using slap flapper. <laughs> I'm gonna pump it up by one. Okay, so I'm down to three, so I'm pumping up by three, one. So you're pumping it by one. Okay, all right. Ooh, okay. uh, 11, um, 16, 17, 18, 7, 19. 7, 19. 7, Megan, no one else aces. 7, 17, <laughs> 13. Uh, he does. But 16. Okay, so uh, he got a 20. So whenever you you reach out to kick, he basically moves out of the way because he it starts focusing on him and it just kind of tries to swing over and you just miss. Just miss. All right, so now it's coming after you. Is there something you would like to do to it, or would you like to try to get out of the way? Try to get out of the way, I suppose. <laughs> okay. All right. Do I need to roll for that? Um, so we'll use thief, and that you have to get out very quickly. Okay, I have a one. Or you could do magician if you want. I also have a one in that. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I would say one of those. Okay, so you tried to do this. You're trying to escape, and. You did not Four. ace, so you did not. <laughs> <laughs> so it uh, basically it punches you right in the gut, oh. and you you go falling back. Oh no! Uh, and now you are not unconscious, but you are knocked down. Ouch! Uh, so delicate. Too. So we'll come back over to you. <laughs> my, my small frame. And you notice that still, like now. This Edwin Silas, whoever it is, is, coming into the room and is trying to actively stop this. Come over and is trying to put the books down. And as he gets closer to you, you can hear him yelling, Adriana, stop. And he's yelling to try and get this to end. And then you look over and you see that uh, Aiden has also gotten off the bed and is coming over to, to Silas, Edwin, whoever this is, and seems to be trying to help. Uh, and let's come back over to you. So now, again, you're trying to resist the urge to run away. Six. Okay, so you can't. You're just headed for the door, and uh, and we'll come back over to you. And the suit of armor is is has now knocked him out and is trying to come back and swing. Uh, so he's punched this way and he's swinging back with the other hand at you. Okay. So do you want to dodge or do you want to actively do something against it? Um. I'm. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna uh, see, maybe I'll yell at it. Yell at it? <laughs> okay. Startle it. I'll be like, stop, you creep! Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't uh, know this. I feel uh, like, you know, uh, flappers sing real loud. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm screwed with this one. <laughs> okay. Oh, so got you one. got a one. All right. So it does not seem to work, and instead, it does manage to hit you and knock you down. Uh, wow. So after that, you also start to notice that uh, you see Edwin and what looks like Silas from the pictures you've seen, and you see uh, Aiden and what looks like Caroline, and they are they are trying to get everything to stop, but it doesn't seem to be working. And the more they try, the more wild the room seems to get. And then you see uh, one of the books come flying out because at this point it seems like the room or whatever it is that's in here has really noticed specifically that Caroline is here and one of the book goes flying right at her or Aiden, you can't tell which it is, and she goes flying across the room and screams out as she does and you hear her say, ow, mommy! And when she says that, the room changes. It gets more violent, more intense, 
but then you see at the doorway that Lorraine has come into the room. But is it Lorraine? You're not sure because you also see Elizabeth. And whenever that happens, um, she stops and she sees Caroline across the room and she, she goes right over to her and hugs her and pulls her close and, and you hear her crying and she says, Caroline, Caroline, I thought I had lost you. And she's sobbing, sobbing. And then Edwin, Silas comes over and puts his hand on her shoulder. And whenever she turns around and sees who it is, you all, all of a sudden are no longer in the room and you see a vision. And this vision is of, uh, Elizabeth, and you see her talking with the maid, and you recognize this maid as the maid that pulled Caroline out mm. of the pool. And, and you can't quite hear what they're saying, but you can see that the maid is, is, is discussing, and she seems a little upset and confused, and then she sort of says something that looks like a revelation. And whenever she says whatever that thing is, you see that Lorraine, her, her, her face changes, and she gets very angry, and, she, and tears start to fill her eyes, and, and she leaves. And then the whole scene changes and you see her at night in the master bedroom and, and Silas is there as well and she's confronting him and this time you can hear a little bit of what she's saying and she's pointing her fingers at him and she's yelling at him and she's telling him that you did this, you killed our daughter, you let her drown. And, and, and he's yelling back at her and he, he's saying, no, I would never, this is ridiculous, you're being a ridiculous woman and this continues to happen. And then and, and he gets more and more angry and she gets more angry and they continue to yell at one another and they get closer and closer to the window. And he, he, he's so angry that he, he, he uh, throws an arm out and knocks into her and she falls off of the balcony and crashes down to the, the ground below, dead on impact as far as you can tell. And, and then all of a sudden you're back in the room and you look at, at uh, Lorraine or uh, Elizabeth or both of them and you can see tears in her eyes and she's looking pointedly at Silas Edwin. And then all of a sudden, again, you're no longer in the room. You, it's an, it seems to be another vision. And you see, uh, you see Silas and he's in his study and he's, he's, he's trying to work at his desk, but then you see that Adriana is, is right behind him and she's whispering to him and he's he's confused. He doesn't seem to know she's there. Uh, and you see this, it, the, the scene jumps multiple times and you see something similar to this. It looks like time has passed. And then you see him getting angrier and angry and you get the very strong sense of confusion, frustration uh, and and hurt and anger. And then, and then there's, it, it almost goes back and forth and then you see him, uh, you see the pool scene again, and you see him watching his daughter drown and he doesn't do anything. And in fact, you can feel in his mind that he's thinking, yes, this is right, this is what she deserves because she always insists on going to places that she sh shouldn't. But once the maid has jumped into the pool to grab her, you can feel that he, he, he's sad. He doesn't understand what's happened. He wants his daughter back. And then you jump to the same scene that you all just saw, except this time it seems to be from uh, Silas's perspective. And and it's him and it's Elizabeth and they are arguing and he's fighting with her and he's angry. You feel such a strong sense of anger and and um, he, he's yelling at her and you see the same moment whenever she falls off of the balcony. But once that happens, you feel a complete change in him. Whatever spell it was that had been over him is completely broken and he realizes what he's done and he realizes who did it to him. And so then you see, uh, a dark room that looks like the servant's room that you were in earlier and you see a small bed in the corner and you see a small figure on that bed and you see that uh, Silas is holding a pillow and he goes over to that small figure and he holds the pillow over her until the figure stops moving. And then next you see you've jumped to a completely different room, it's back in the master bedroom and you see that he has swung or he's thrown a rope over a beam in the ceiling and he's pulling it up and he's on a chair and he knocks the chair out from under him and he swings hanging himself. And then all of a sudden you were back in Aiden's room and you see both Silas and Elizabeth looking at one another and you realize that this is how they're communicating. This is the first time that they have been able to actually tell each other what happened those 30 years ago. And then Elizabeth turns to look at all of you and she sees you. She seems to realize what it is you're here for. And she stands up, leaving Caroline and Silas, and she says, Adriana, stop. And then everything in the room drops and stops. And you see this little girl appear. 
and she goes over to Elizabeth and she says, Mommy! And she goes up to hug her and Ms. Elizabeth Baker, the mirror. grabs her and she says, it's okay, it's okay, I'm here for you, you're my daughter and I love you very, very much. You've always been a very good girl. And as she's doing this, she's hugging her and she looks up and she says, now! <laughs> I can flip it open, the mirror. Okay, so you flip the mirror open and, and so the way that uh, Elizabeth is hugging her, Adriana kind of has her face on the other side. So you're holding it right there and Adriana sees it and she starts to go no and the no turns from a little girl's no to a very deep, demonic sounding no, something that should not be coming out of a little girl. And, and her form starts to smoke and shift and it falls out of Elizabeth's arm and it goes right into the mirror. And the mirror starts to shake and then smash it. Put it on the ground. Smash it, like yeah. So when you smash it, it shatters into a million tiny pieces, and you hear a very loud scream. It's so loud that it pierces your ears, and then you feel this whooshing, and 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 the scream seems to go out into the air and then down into the hall and away, and everything is quiet, and then all you hear is crying because Elizabeth is in the middle of the room, crying over the daughter she just lost, knowing full well that that was the only option there was. And as she's sitting there in the middle of the room crying, Silas and Caroline go over to her and they sit down with her in the middle of the room and all cry together for just a moment. But then they stand together and they look at all of you and they smile. And then you see the three of them leave Lorraine and Edwin and Aiden, and they float off into the sky. And Lorraine, Aiden, and Edwin are left. Lorraine starts to cry as well. Having lived everything, having experienced everything through these spirits that have now finally been able to leave this house. You all were able to successfully get rid of the demon that was holding him here, holding them here, and keeping them from being able to find one another. And that is where our story ends. So very Yay. good job. <laughs> we didn't die. We did not die. We were. You tried. Really close. Close. TPK there. You tried to die. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for this. You guys were fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, you're, good. Good. you're welcome. Thank you. Um, this has been Mysterium at Bainbridge Estate. Uh, man, I gotta figure out what the next bit is. Oh, I know. So uh, last episode, there were whispers that were unlocked by you, chat. So uh, they were unlocked for the great Vano, for Ellie, and for Horace. So I want you guys to go around and tell them what those were. Yes. So we'll, yes, we'll start with you. Mine was, uh, I have a thought that feels like my own. I begin to have a feeling like I've contracted a terminal illness, probably from Aiden, which is terrible for Vano because he is terrified of death. <laughs> yes, yes. And what was yours, Ellie? Um, you feel like everyone thinks you are silly and not helpful, just a young, ridiculous girl. And yours, Horace? Well, I did not bring mine with me again this oh, time. Oh, you didn't? Okay. <laughs> no, I forgot, but I remember it. Uh, in thinking that these thoughts came from my own head, whenever I saw someone, uh, whenever someone said the word spirit or ghost, I would see their face start to become strange and their eyes would bleed or, or their facial features would start to float apart in, in bizarre ways. Mm -hmm. And we did not unlock the one for uh, Iris, but hers was that she senses that Horace's dog, St. George, is becoming aggressive towards her and like he might want to attack at some point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that one did not happen. George. But just so you Don't know. Don't be that way. <laughs> Oh, so let's go around and, and everybody tell them where they can find you. Uh, and if there's anything you would like to plug, we'll start over here with you, Jordan. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Uh, I sometimes tweet. 
uh, often it's about saving throw shell. So, uh, uh, you can also find me usually on Fridays uh, with Wild Cards, our Deadlands Reloaded show. <clears throat> Although, uh, it, we just finished up our third season. And so this next Friday, we're going to have a special, uh, a, sort of a one-off, but it's like a, a follow-up to a one-off <laughs> in a high fantasy setting called Prickly Tall Stag and the Danger Seekers. Coma pairs. Who came up with excited. that name? Yes. It was committee. Yes, it was a nice committee name. Amazing. That's why it is so wonderful <laughs> and easy to say. <laughs> Yes. Yes. What about you, Michaela? Uh, my name's Michaela Lynn. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram as Geek Your Heart Out. Uh, I don't have anything else going right now. This was my my show with you guys. Nice. It was so lovely and scary, <laughs> and you made me cry, and I can't I can't get the tears out right now. But sorry, I made you cry. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'm Heather Wood. You can find me on Twitter uh, with two underscores between Heather and Wood, and I've got a. Well, YouTube thing my friend Kevin and I are doing where we test stuff and we have a used car show that's coming out and Whoa. we finished editing it but there's still and well, hopefully in a week it'll be up so you'll see it there. Nice. <laughs> nice. Cool. How about you Philip? Uh, my name is Philip Rossi and you can find me on Instagram where I sometimes Instagram <laughs> under the Philip J. Rossi, I think. I think it's Philip J. Rossi. <laughs> I don't know. It just popped into my head. Um, also, tired people. Yeah. Also, I directed a web series, which you can find on the YouTubes. It is called Liddy Bitties, and it is the story of uh, two old women who have a public access book review, which they do terribly. <laughs> That's awesome. It's amazing. That sounds fun. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter at Megan Caves. It's M E G H A N C A V E S. You can also find me this Friday on our Wild Cards, but not Wild Cards, Prickly Tall Stack and the Dangerous Secrets Comic Pairs instead, which should be lots of fun. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Wednesday at Iron Keep, which is our D and D show, and you can catch me, uh, Garav, and Jordan Caves Callerman on our podcast Experience Pointers, which is a GM RPG podcast. You can find it at EXP Pointers Pod on Twitter. If you back here at Patreon for ten dollars and up, you get that a week early. So check that out. I think our most recent, our next episode for Patreon will come out this Tuesday. Um, yes, and also thank you all so much for uh, joining me on this journey and being here. Thank you guys. Thank Dom and Jordan back there for running all this fun stuff that you run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but thank you. Yeah, no, no, you guys did good. Thanks. That's a really goofy face. Wow, I wish you guys could see these goofy faces. Ah, yes. Don't want it. It's yeah. ugly. But thank you. This is, uh, this was uh, a lot of fun and, and incredibly terrifying and I really appreciate all the support that I've had. It's, it means a whole lot. So thank you guys and thank you guys for all your donations donations, for watching, for commenting, for posting things. It, it goes a long way to make us feel great and also to help out the channel. So thank you guys so much. Uh, and also, if you like the sounds that you heard, some of them are from Plate Mail Games, which is Wes Otis's company. You can uh, find it if you do exclamation point PMG there in chat. You should be able to find information about that. He's got a lot of really great background tracks. For everything else that I used, I've made a YouTube playlist that I will post again so you can find all of the crazy things. I kind of mix them together in different ways so you can see what I utilize to do that. Um, our next show which starts tomorrow is another mini campaign it is called the last vhs store and uh jordan caves gallerman here is a player in that omar will be running it i'm not sure who the other players nika harper i believe is another player harper, holland holland, holland fargus and who's the last person colin colin morris colin morris, <laughs> colin morris. <laughs> uh, uh, colin morris. Uh, yeah, it should be really cool. It's actually uh, set in, what is it, the late 90s, whenever the, you know, Blockbuster and all those stores are closing down, VHS stores are closing down. And basically a group of sort of like, uh, I guess you would say community watch folks or something like that, go uh, to a VHS store because they think something weird is happening. Oh, thank you. Crazykin? 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 Two more lucky shots! Two more lucky shots! Oh, thank you! Uh, sorry, there's nothing to roll. We should roll them just for Yeah, just roll yeah. them. Just, to, you know, uh, re-roll something. See if you, you have a good night. Like, uh, boom! Oh, you missed yeah. it! Or you got it! There boom! There you go. Obscure knowledge. I'm gonna add obscure knowledge. We did so good. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Hey! Oh, Very wow. good. This one? This one? Got him. You guys should also Thank tune in. I'm going to be running a mini campaign based on the board game Monopoly. Oh! Where everyone is going to be uh, shoes and boots or, or hats. Please put that <laughs> yeah. up, up to your eyes. Yes, Say that. Yes. the costume. Monopoly, man. Yes, you got the costume board. Oh, uh, but yes. Hotels! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> tune in tomorrow for the last VHS store, where uh, the movies start to come to life. Should be interesting. Uh, tune in Wednesday for Iron Keep, of course. Tune in Friday for Prickly Dolls and Ninja Seekers. And tune in uh, Sunday, 5 p.m., for uh, Tempting Fate, which I think is still Toy Story right now, uh, which is a lot of fun. Aww. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can list off, except that if you would like to see a little bit more of the stuff that I've made, the, there are articles and different things from Mysterium. You can find them under Mysterium RPG. That is the hashtag that I use on all social media platforms. Yeah. I think that's it. I think I covered everything. Hopefully. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you guys. And we'll see you on the next show. Bye. Bye.